Holy, let's start recording this too. Whoops, we've been live for a little bit. Uh, we're <laughs> <talk> <laughs> okay, that's no, fine. We, we are talking about uh, Kuroe. <laughs> yeah. This is Nerd of All Trades, and uh, I mean, are, is there anyone even on Twitch right now to catch us in this moment of glory? Uh, no, good. Okay, Very well. No one will know. <laughs> um, yeah, so, whoops, uh, we're not going to re-intro all that. We talked a little bit. Uh, this is why you should watch live. Hey, you know, <laughs> twitch.com, we've got a stream, you know. We don't really announce it ahead of time, but boy, should you have it open every day constantly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I could do a quick recap. If that's yeah, good. go yeah. ahead. Well, so, like, Kuroe was a fascinating character to me. She was introduced towards the beginning of the story, and she was critical in helping out Irohaha to sort of survive some of the, the deeper impacts of her initial battles. And really, it wasn't explained how or why she came into the picture until later. You know, like, Nemu dispatched her, more or less, had a general mission for her that included protecting Iroha. And, you know, so she came into the picture that way, but we get to learn her story more. Like, there was a girl that she didn't help her. Well, in a sense, she did help her initially, right? She helped her to survive that initial battle. Yeah. You know, but she, she saved her. I mean, yeah, she, she wouldn't be her. here without her. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, she has that goodness in her. We see that, but she didn't help her further. And I was just relating to how we can all relate to, like, none of us is always the best version of ourselves. Right. You know? Most of us actually care about other people and want to help them. I, People consider me to be a helpful person, but I have my limitations. Yes. And I don't, you know, feel proud of every decision I've made in life about when to help and when not to. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a, I think, very relatable. We're watching her go through this, and we're watching the regret Eid had her. Yeah. She's clearly a character of conscience, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I'm really glad that they fleshed it out the way they did. It was very compelling for them to introduce her to me and leave me with so many questions, but then to satisfy all that in season two and three. Yeah. You know? Very, uh... Crushingly relatable to me at times. Uh, it was like when I worked in politics, it's like I've definitely had a lot of struggles of like, look at what these other people have done. Like, why haven't I done that? Why couldn't I do it that way? Why can't I help people in this way? Blah blah blah. And it's like, when when you hear her talk about like that's how she looks at it in the comparison when she's like l losing herself to her doppel. She's right. like, what about what Iroha has done? Like, why haven't I done that? Could I have done that? Like, made a friend of her. It wouldn't even have been in that negative, necessarily. Like, she doesn't go into this much detail. But what sure. she's meaning is, like, if I had made her a friend, we could have been stronger together. We could have got more grease seeds. Mm -hmm. And she would have been a net positive, not a net negative. Right. And here I am hoarding this grief seed I have because I don't know when I'm going to need it. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get another one because I'm not very strong. And she seems even less strong than me. Right. Like, I mean, it's a live-or-die calculus, but, like, it's hard to make that in the moment, and, like, it's not even necessarily true that she made the just pure, like, Machiavellian evaluation wrong choice of that per se. Right. But it's like, what do you do? It's not your responsibility to save other people. Like, you're going above and beyond to try to help other people when you're in that spot. You have to, like, take care of yourself to make sure you're in a position to help. But it's like, when are you in that position? You yeah. know, when are you yeah. just getting by versus you could probably help that person at least a little bit. Like, it's well, hard. Well, it is very hard. Not only that, but, like, there's all these other factors that play in. Like, the level of emotional exhaustion you might have, you know, and the level of worry and distraction you have. How much are you of yourself are you even dedicating to this? And really kind of what version of yourself are you? If it's a truly besieged, like, you know, you could... We don't know the history of it, but, she, you know, Kuroe may have been in a number of pitched battles, and she's like good God, I have this grief seed and, you know, this is the difference between life and death. And I just yeah. met this girl. Like, I hope you're okay. Right. But, you know, so it's, it's... And that's true, too. Like, we see it in a context of, like, this is clearly an important moment in her life. Like, yeah. she's thought about this often and a lot and heavily so. And at, at the time, she just met that person. She didn't know this was going to be the thing she thought about for years, potentially, to come. Yeah. Who knows when this happened, you know? I mean, the gravity is not apparent when you're in it. Yeah. If the fact is that time stops for no one, we can't reverse it, and then, so we have to make all these decisions in our lives in real time, even if we're not prepared. Yeah. You know? So, I, and if really, realistically, if, if we were going to judge ourselves harshly by our most selfish and, you know, perhaps ill-thought-out decisions, mm -hmm. 
we would all be miserable for the rest of our lives, right? Yeah. You know, okay, so it's 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 tough. To me, I want to cut Kuroe a break. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just that, I mean, she's a likable character, but it's just that, like, I don't think anybody can always be ready to help everybody all the time. It's just, yeah. that's, that's not the position that we're in. Um, of course, deep grief, deep regret, you know, eventually leading to her demise, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it's really sad. It kind of, the way the story sets it up, too, it's like, you know, uh, Ui is kind of encouraging uh, Iroha to go save her friend, mm-hmm. you know? And so you might expect, oh, she's going to go save Kurue. No. She didn't try. <laughs> she really tried. And it really, it was rough, too, because you could see her starting to cry when she has to pull out the knife and, like, okay, you know, I have to take down the witch that she's become, mm-hmm. you know? And that's harsh, you know? Uh Despite all of our best attempts, we're going to win and lose battles. Nobody always wins, nobody always loses. And it can be emotionally painful to live with the consequences. You know? Kure also always felt that she was apart and different. You know? And, it, like, the darkness seeping off of her mm-hmm. it was, it seemed to be metaphorical in a sense of, like, how, like, I'm alone, I'm yeah. separate, I'm in the shadows, I'm not like them, I'm, you know? It and, kind of was like a self-fulfilling prophecy, too. She always yeah. felt isolated, so she always became isolated. Exactly. Like, she could have easily... Like, there was a number of times she was around other black feathers and, like, distanced herself from them in her mind, and then they just went on about their business. It's yeah. like... You, you probably could reach out to them. You already are both in the same cult. I mean, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. I'm, I'm comparing this to a cult now, but being a former soldier, mm-hmm. there were definitely times where I'm like, I am not down with what's going on here. And I came very introverted to mm-hmm. it, you know, very into myself. Like, I need to serve, I need to live through my contract and leave, you know. So, not noble, but how I felt at times. I, I will say this note. I don't want to just straight read from my notes. I've got a okay. lot, by the way. Yeah, yeah, show. go for it. So, like, uh, again, this is probably for a longer form video I have coming. But <laughs> compared to when I did the scroll through last stream mm-hmm. uh, and video of the notes I had for the first season, like, they're just so much more <laughs> now for uh, these last two seasons where they're like, the, the setup in season one was about, like, proving that they have something to tell that doesn't violate the world and is, like, true to the canon and everything. And then this season, they fucking told their story. Like, these last two seasons, it was all about the different character stories and the different plot points playing out. And I lost my place a little bit here. Let me do a quick check here. Absolutely. (laughs) And actually, it pulls in everybody from the original Monaco Magic, or at least the five major uh, uh, magical girls in that series, and elaborates on how they're interacting with all this. Um, it pulls in the more minor minor, minor characters like Kurue and kind of flushes out their stories. It also, a lot of the girls get wrapped up into Magia, and I can be sympathetic to that, although I'm not in favor of what Magia is doing. Mm-hmm. I could get, like, if I had basically had an unknown time frame for my death sentence, and this was a possible way out, I would be interested. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'd be like, okay, let me get into this and see what you really have to offer, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So I'm sympathetic to them jumping into it, but I'm also sympathetic to them jumping out of it, you know, because it's like everything here. And that's, well, I'm not sure we'll flesh this out much more greatly, but like everything comes at some level of sacrifice here. There is no easy answer. Nothing for free. Yeah, 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 really. Nothing. There's no free lunch in this scenario. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, so at the end credits of her episode, episode three in season three, mm-hmm. um, where Iroha finishes the episode by finishing her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they have this uh, text on the sides of the end credits oh, uh, okay. that talks about uh, being on the side of goodness. Oh, okay. And it's like, uh, she, it's, I think, being told from Kuroi's perspective in her grief. And it says stuff like... Uh, that goodness is ultimately what's the killer of magical girls. Because, like, they have to be on that side of goodness. And if they aren't, like, they're going to fall into being a witch. They're mm-hmm. going to not be able to get their grief seeds. Like, that's kind of what, from her perspective, was being this killer. And ultimately, when you think about it from her story, like, the hyper-focusing on what was the right thing to do in her situation, where the ultimate good was, was what drove her to despair. 
And I just thought that was a really nice touch talking about it kind of in an indirect way that affects all magical girls, but when you really think about it, for her in particular, it definitely was the main cause. Like, this hyper-focusing on what the righteous path, like, what most characters in a story do. They try to find out what the good thing to do is and be the hero. Mm. And it's like, in this world, that gets you fucking killed. <laughs> it gets you fucking killed, and also, it's the hardest path to take, but failing in that path makes us feel terrible about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a digression, yeah. but, to, you know, to be frank, there were a number of like basically like human rights based protests mm -hmm. that happened over the last several years, and I came to my own conclusion about those of like okay, you know all of us that want to see ourselves as good people would say oh yeah I'd march with Dr Martin Luther King right mm -hmm. right but would you right right well I got my answer and it's not a yes or a no, my answer is that sometimes I went down there peacefully to support human rights protests, mm -hmm. sometimes I didn't. You know, and the real person that I am is someone that sometimes does good things and sometimes says, oh, I can't take this today. I'm exhausted. I just want to right. play with my daughter. I don't want to, you know, yeah. I don't want to deal with tear gas today. <laughs> right. You know? so, <laughs> Which, I mean, who could blame you for that? I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like, it, you can't be the person who does it all, but it's like, and when you do introspection, you're held up to that standard because yeah, you're yeah, the yeah. only one whose actions you can control. So I would feel bad about not going, and then I would go, and that caused another sort of mental exhaustion, being an introvert and being in this chaos, you know, and it's like yeah. I'm not there to add to chaos. I'm there to, you know, hopefully support the right voice for human rights, mm -hmm. and, you know, and justice. And so, and it's like, so, but, but being there in those positions, it's, it's, it's tough, and I think I'm finding my answer was something that I think we can all face, should face, is that I think most of us are in between. It's yeah. not all yes or no. It's sometimes you got it in you and sometimes you don't. Absolutely. You know, it's very few people that are absolutely one way or the other. Um, you know, most of, most of us care, whatever those sources of goodness that we want to stand for are, but also have limited resources. And, you know, resolve, too. If we pr approached absolutely ever, every moral problem with absolute resolve to fix it, we destroy ourselves in short time. Yeah, really. You know, it's like you have to have some ability to pick your battles, mm -hmm. you know, and then you might feel bad about that later. All right. You know, and everybody seems to, you know, and I guess that's very human, you know, mm -hmm. very relatable to me. A very character. good character. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leading into that, we haven't given our full evaluations of the show. First, I yeah. want to do, uh, so you, you had mentioned you were going to rewatch some of the episodes. I did. Uh, before, just for a refresher, because we had to delay because of technical <laughs> issues. And yeah. Hopefully this is better quality and better lit. I've got even better quality coming. It's just fucking a nightmare. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, on first watch through, I don't know if uh, watching some of the... How much did you watch again? Um, I caught most, mostly the beginning and the end and not much in the, the, that middle section. Okay. Um, um, did, did watching it again kind of give you a different take on your evaluation of anything, or did it um, just kind of refresh you of what happened? It refreshed me, but uh, I would say I put more, even more thought into Kuroe, probably because I saw more of her coming in, mm -hmm. you know. I also thought a little more about the moral implications of everybody's decisions and how they were mm -hmm. came to about the end. I don't know when we'll get into all that, but how the mm -hmm. end game wrapped up. Yeah. You know, and what, what it sort of means, and like, where, where do I sit in all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of know, I think I know what decision I'm going to say I support, but apart from the most devastating decision, mm -hmm. which I don't support, <laughs> uh, they all have points to, you know, genuine points to be made about how or why, you know, everything gets sacrificed at some level, and I can understand how people would get there. A lot of the motivations come out of love, mm -hmm. you know, uh, well... Not all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Alina, trying to make some sort of clever Alina reference Gray. to her, but she speaks in English is her thing, so I don't know how to do that in a way that's apparent that I'm referencing her, since yeah. everything else I say is in English. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so overall, uh, evaluation of the series, scale of 1 to 10 roughly, what no. what would you say, and uh, just, uh, just in its totality? Yeah, you know? yeah. So, and, and prefacing that... Mm -hmm. The first season I gave about a nine, mm -hmm. you know, and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was left open ended, depending on how they wrapped everything up and yes. kind of how, the consequences of everything. Mm -hmm. You have a nine point five mm -hmm. overall. You know, if anything, the second season did a great job of continuing the story, wrapping things up, and making it all satisfying and compelling and interesting, and worth thinking about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say nine point five. 
Really, have, very, very, very good. I have one critique of the story, <clears throat> but it's <laughs> it's Alina. We'll just say that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Depending on how I want to look at the series, it's anywhere in the range of 8.5 to 9.5 for me. Oh, okay. Like, and it's not that I hated Alina or anything. We don't have to get into her right now. But it's just, uh, there's she, lo- she was such an element there. at the end. And mm-hmm. I, uh, there's a, a YouTuber, um, uh, Arcada, he does uh, Glass Reflection as his channel. Oh, okay. And he did reviews for a long time. I think he still does them occasionally. I've fallen off a bit with him, so I don't know. Uh, but, uh, he always said, uh, the ending is paramount. He made kind of a slogan out of that. And I thought that was a great point to make every time you're doing a review. The ending kind of is what you're left with. Right. So you really have to end strong. And Alina, I feel like, is the only part of the entire series that I feel didn't fucking knock that shit out of the park rating 11 out of 10. Right. (laughs) But unfortunately, she's a huge part of the ending. So, like, I don't know how much I want to... She is. I, I'm not sympathetic with her point of view. I can understand some people can be vengeful and go into that kind of direction of madness and mm-hmm. inflicting upon others. Um, and I don't like her whatsoever. Right. Um, but uh, ooh, how do I put this? Yeah. I mean, the ending includes her really messed up point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, it also includes a lot of other points of view that come together. Is everybody's trying to f- kind of finalize their own plans, mm-hmm. and so as a, in a totality, yeah, Alina weighs in heavily for what she tries to do. Mm-hmm. Um, this doesn't ruin it for me or anything, mm-hmm. even though I don't sympathetic sympathize with that point of view, and I don't yeah. you know what I mean. But she she wound up being sort of a, a mm, an end game villain. Yeah, a big of, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, it's like, well, okay, there's a lot of bad scenarios here, but that's objectively to me the worst. And since we're just diving into it, I'll just say, yeah, so yeah. my point mm-hmm. with her is, like, so I like that she was another big bad after you could, like, do this redemption for Toka and, uh, I almost said Kuroi. Yeah. <laughs> Kuroi kind of had a redemption, but not really. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Toka and Nemu, they could have their redemption and fail mm-hmm. and still die, not quite for nothing, but, like, ineffectually. Right, Not, not yeah. the way they thought they were going to. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I like that. I like that she was this kind of unstoppable monster at the very end. I like... I mean, I've got a fucking Jinx poster behind me. Like, I like <laughs> madness, and we'll talk about Arcane later. Um, <laughs> spoiler for what we might be doing next. Um, so I, I love, uh, like, kind of Harley Quinn madness kind of characters. Mm. Um so I've got no problem with that. Whether they wanted to take it in the direction of, like, she she's making chaos and that's in an art form, mm. or if she just is an artist and is taking an artistic point of view on this chaos and she's, like, hyper-damaged. The problem I have with her is she didn't get uh, the Kuroe treatment. Like, right when her important part was coming up, you had this huge development of Kuroe. You got into her history, her backstory, her trauma, her motivations. Yeah. Like, she, she had some of the development prior to, but, like, when her time came, they developed the fuck out of her. I feel like yes, there's yeah. a couple of times that characters have had their moment, and right as their moment's coming, they develop them, you know, in this series. And I, and I think that's totally fine. You don't have to develop everyone early on and then let stuff play out later. It can be sometimes more impactful to do it right as it's coming on. Sure. So that's totally... I got no yeah. problems with that, but... Uh, Alina, I feel like, didn't really have any development. Like, yeah, when we were getting yeah. the backstory of uh, what actually happened in the hospital, how they made their wish, which we can talk about more, <laughs> how baby True. Kube was formed. Right. Um, it turns out Alina was in the same hospital, so she has an interesting backstory relating to these main characters and why she's at such a high level of Magius. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Yeah. And very interesting and intriguing. There could be a lot to talk about there. But that's literally all that was said. There wasn't a lot to talk about there. That was right, it. Yeah, yeah. And what's her motivation? Okay, she's clearly got some sort of like painting background. Yeah. And like yeah. in the end, like the post credit scene in the last episode, I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that? No, it's not. I probably did, but I don't remember. I did, but I so don't remember. So they're going right through, it's like a voiceover from uh, uh, Iroha. Okay. And she's talking about like 
no one's gonna know like the Oh no I did see this. Yeah, yeah. it's our record. Nobody will know but it's our Magia record and they sort of close yeah. the cover. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. It's like, oh they said it, they said the title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so in that there's like a moment where there's like a subway station and mm -hmm. there's uh an ad well it looks like it's hard to tell, but it looks like an ad for like an art gallery where the featured artist is Alina Gray. Oh, interesting. And okay. so the, she's talking about uh, no one will ever know I'm gonna butcher the quote, but no one will ever know the beautiful paintings that Alina made. Oh. And it's like so clearly there was some emphasis on this her, and she's always shown doing crazy in a kind of chaotic madness yeah, way, which sure. I love. That was great. <laughs> I thought that was super cool. But like we never got a shot into her past. Like, technically, she was in the past with, uh, you know, at the hospital, but, like... Yeah, it was very brief and Her past, like, yeah. it wasn't about her there. Yeah. It was her interaction with Kyubei there was mm -hmm. more in how that related to the other girls, because the way she found out that magical girls became witches was clearly by talking to them. Mm -hmm. And then when they're on the rooftop being introduced for the first time, it's after the amnesia has happened to everybody aside from uh, Nemu. Right, right, yeah. So that's the only reason it seems like the first time they've interacted. Clearly they interacted previously to that. So, like, <clears throat> what, what, since it was all kind of off-screen stuff, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just about how she interacted with them. It wasn't really about her trials and tribulations. And we get right. a vibe from her that she's the generally pissed off and feels betrayed and lied to by the incubators and wants to go the Homer route of just shooting them. I love that. Yes, like, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I actually, that's one thing where I agree with her. Yeah, you know? very it's much. Like, if only it were effective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't really accomplish anything, but I would be pissed too. Mm -hmm. um, where I think it could have been better, mm -hmm. and this is rare because they go into so much good detail with many of the girls, mm -hmm. but with Alina they don't. Mm -hmm. It would have been much more interesting if they showed some of her past mm -hmm. and showed how she could come to the psychological position of saying, you know what, if you're going to use us as a sacrifice... I'll sacrifice you motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, and developing the character that would think that way, giving exactly. her a history and experiences that could guide a person to being that, say, bitter and... Just five minutes. Yeah. Give me five minutes yeah. of why... She's gonna put this on all of humanity. Yeah, I was gonna say that's. I'm it down. Could be like, it could be like there's somebody that she loves and cares about that you know could have been helped at many steps along the way, but humanity just kind society of, as a whole tossed them aside. Yeah, yeah whatever. It, it could you know, be anything. It, it, and that could be the justification for going into that direction, right? Mm -hmm. And it would be much more compelling. I agree with that. Um, that's my only critique. Yeah. Oh no, that's, that's nine point five out of ten. Yeah, Agreed. That's, that, that's a really good critique. That's hands yeah. down would make it better and. I guess it was easy for me to discard her because it's easy for me to feel alienated by her perspective. Because like it is nice that she's uh, almost comic book level evil because yeah, she's yeah. not developed. So it's easy to hand wave away the it lack is, of development yeah. just because it's like, well, she's not relatable and I don't like her. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, but, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we could have. So, so like, what what you're talking about though would be just a hands down improvement. Mm -hmm. So I would agree with that. However, like I think the way I en encountered this on first blush without going deeper into the thought pattern is kind of like, you know, that level of retaliation made me think of sort of a really, mm, like a vengeful madness. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, absolutely. And it's sort of, and that, it, it'll, it's a bit alienating and also it's like it just, uh, like this is the way I think about such a thing like you have these magical girls that are more or less being used as human sacrifices and yes. arguably that their sacrifices are helping to uh, propel man humanity forward mm -hmm. and I think the real test of the characters of the people involved in general society would be to lay the true story on them and say hey yeah. Are you okay with this? Yes. You know, and there are a lot of people would say, hell no, I'm not okay with this. Right. And anybody that was okay with it, okay, I can get why you'd be pissed off at them. Like, yeah. okay, they're assholes, you know. Yeah. But it's not, you can't just carte blanche everyone into that group mm -hmm. when they're ignorant to what's going on. Yeah. Clearly know? that's an evaluation done by somebody who's gone through some type of trauma. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I want to know what that trauma is. That's yeah. why I watch m Magical Girls, to yeah, see their yeah. trauma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very and, weird and, thing to say, but it's that's, true. that's a lost <laughs> opportunity. It makes me wonder if they did anything in the video game with her, or not. I yeah, I'm curious. I wish wish I could play. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And then there was that, that uh, and this is another thing, just sort of related to no development. Um, mm. And this isn't really... A criticism. I guess you have to cut things off somewhere. But there was that 
seemingly strong uh, white haired magical girl, not Mifuyu. Yeah, with the know? eye. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what's her deal? You know what I mean? Yeah, she and kind of popped in out of nowhere and was treated as if we'd already been introduced to her. Yeah, I'm really like, what? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe she was major in the video game or something. She gave me Probably. the air yeah. of a powerful magical girl, though. You mm. know what I mean? I could be wrong, but she just has that. Probably had the over just, stats. Yeah, she kind of, <laughs> she kind of looked older, more mature, and just handled her herself, and I don't deal with kids. Right, right. You know, I'm a bruiser. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, there's certain things that didn't get developed and might have been interesting, um, but Alina Gray is the most lost opportunity, although I did think that they developed well with Nemu, Toka, and Uli. Yes. Literally yeah. everyone else that yeah. was covered in the series, they did it. I mean, and again, the context of this, this is why I say I have a range to 8.5 to 9.5. If I'm really mm. getting into the weeds of it, I feel like it's... They con they accomplished with every character, so they clearly could have accomplished it with Alina. It yes. must have been like a time crunch thing, or just a lack of source material. It's, I don't know. They made the source material. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so like, so if I want to be more critical, I could go as low as eight point five, and even then, I feel like I'm being kind of a stickler and unfair. But like, when I think about the context of like, this is a spinoff show made to promote a fucking mobile game, like. This is fucking so good. Like, yeah. we're so spoiled. They, I couldn't have thought of any way this could even be improved at any point until this one woman pick. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, it, it's for a spinoff. Like, unbelievable. And, and, and I've watched all kinds of anime. Some of it's very popular. And I'll get through it and be like, eh, it's about eight. Right. You know, it's like, right. oh, that's seven. You yeah. Know? There's yeah. lots of stuff out there like that that no one I watched it. Here. I enjoyed it. Like, we were talking yeah. about that Gundam, I think, last time. I don't know okay. if we did it on air or not, but oh, okay. the, the Witch from Mercury one. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's like Gundam that happens in a school. And it's like, okay, anime school setting, but it's Gundam. And it's beautiful 2D mech, and it's like 2D mech made recently, so mm. it looks fucking gorgeous. I, I'm watching it. Don't sure, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I go to Gundam for like, Something that's a little bit more weighty on the philosophy and right, space sure. drama, head knowledge stuff, like yeah. their head game stuff. And it's like, there's not none of that in there, but it's just, it's in a school setting, you know? Like sure. She's fighting to protect uh, her waifu. <laughs> it's like, okay, I mean, yeah, I yes. like waifus. Uh, but <laughs> I can't complain, I'm watching it, but is it a fucking 9.5? No, it's yeah, not a 9.5. It's, it's not a Gundam double zero. It's not a Gundam I, I guess that's one of the things that has to be, for anything I rate really high, it's not enough for me to enjoy it. I have to be really engaged. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this stuff really engaged me because I really wanted to know yeah. how the characters were motivated and how this is going to work out. You know? And I'm just so impressed that they did this all in the world. So, like, if we, if I can shift the conversation for a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm just going into gush mode here. But, like, <laughs> I love how much they didn't address after the first season of proving to you, like, we're willing... We're doing every signal we can to let you know we're respecting the canon. <laughs> After all that was done, and they really fucking told their story. They didn't yeah. really do anything like that until the very end, post-credits, <clears throat> where you see uh, one, one of the voiceover lines that uh, said... Let me see, I think I even have it wrote down here. This... Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Uh, nobody fails, or nobody knows that we failed to reach our destination. And that's the voiceover line that Iroha is saying as Homer resets. Oh, right. And it's yeah, like, yeah. there. this is all about Embryo Eve. It's going to combine with uh, uh, Walpurgis Knot and yeah. consume it and then use that amplified power to do this. And then it's like, oh, I mean, Alina, or Embryo Alina is going <laughs> to fuse with Walpurgis Knot and then use this amplified and then they just kill her, her embryo Alina form, mm -hmm. and then that's it. And then it's like, here's what happened, everybody's got a happy life, everyone's doing it, well, everyone who's alive is yeah, <laughs> doing yeah. their thing. <laughs> and they don't really touch on the fact that, yeah, well, Pergastant was there, and then isn't. Yes. So, yeah, that's true too, yeah. that would mean Madoka took the fucking deal and beat it. Mm. So it's a failed timeline. Yes, and you yeah, see, that's, a, that's what I perceived it to be, is a failed timeline. You see Homura reset in those end credits, mm -hmm. and then you see the, at the very end, uh, or right before the last shot, uh, it's Iroha in her magical girl uniform, and Gattaca, 
as yeah. the law of cycles, holding the notebook that's like what the show is playing on the pages of the uh, storybook, right. and then they close it together, and then they're done with it, and this was the story, and the story's done. Yes, and it's yeah. like, in the original series, Gautica went to everywhere, of every timeline that Homer had been through, so this is just one of them. Yes. Yeah. What a fucking wonderful way to weave this into the existing canon, not have to retcon anything. Yes. And yeah. yet they added an entirely new mechanic with this doppel system, mm -hmm. and they hit the exact story beats that made the first thing good of, like, we're going to do wishes that are going to accidentally implicate us to, like, god level. Mm. Well, that's what the three of them in the hospital did. Yeah. But they did it knowingly. They did, it wasn't even an accident with them. They were like, no, no, we want your power, and we're going to use it this way, and two of us are geniuses. <laughs> so we're calculating this shit out. I'm going to make this fucking happen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they put in the research. They asked the questions. They did the studies. They really, they took the time to get as informed as they could. Yeah, yeah. They, get as informed as they possibly could, and then they took the gamble. Mm -hmm. You know, which life can be like that. A lot of our most important decisions are well studied, but don't always work out. Yeah. You know? It was working very good until yeah. it turned out, ooh, you couldn't turn it off. <laughs> it's like, okay. Damn. Yeah. Well, then... I guess that's fair. <laughs> she is the one handling all the grief while it's still grief. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would see that'd be hard. <laughs> yeah, and I also saw that like, it was interesting after the fact, you know, that Toka. That were for sure cannon fodder gonna die yeah. or become a witch. That yep. was their group. Yeah, and they had to work with that and all the desperation that comes with it, mm -hmm. the horrible negativity. And I mean, it's not unique. Actually, there's a uh, somebody who has a Quaylag has a, a, a channel for Dark Soul stuff, mm -hmm. and she used to do certain mental health things. Check your computer if you just heard that notification. <laughs> she, she discussed, uh, she was a mental health professional, but the problem that she had was that she's had her own massive, like, and I don't know the details of it, but like her own, suffering her own experiences younger in life, and it was sort of all the stuff was impacting her, mm -hmm. you know, and so, like, it had a health consequence on her, yeah. and she had to get out of that, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that kind of makes me think of Toka and the experience that she was going through and taking on all the, the empathetic based pain of all the magical girls that were trying to help. Yeah. I can also see how bent I could be in an empathetic state of seeing all that suffering and saying, I will fix this. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and anything that gets in the way of me fixing this is something I have to fix. Yeah. You know, and that, you know, <laughs> well, let's use that as a good segue to get yeah. into the motivations. Before before we discuss the specific motivations, though, I want to talk about how uh, Nemu and Toka stopped and restarted their motivations like three times. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that that was funny. It like I could totally see how if you were going to do that and you like stated it like that at the outset. Mm -hmm. I would roll my eyes and be like, this is going to be so fucking cheesy or dumb or mismanaged. <laughs> like... It did feel like at a couple of times they were just like, nope, fuck it, we're doing this. Like, whether or not we think it's right or it's ultimately what we would want or what Iroha would want or what Ui would want. Like, they, it, it felt, it didn't feel forced at any point. Mm. It didn't feel like they had to do it because of the plot. Oh, okay. Like, they, they did it because that's what their character would choose to do in that situation. And each time the motivations were slightly different. It was the yeah. original plan. And then it's the last ditch chance to still make the plan work because we got to try. And then it was like, well, everything's fucked. We can at least go down with our sinking ship that we set sail in the first place mm -hmm. and make sure that there's no more consequences after that. Right. You know? And, and I mean, like, at least the initial change, I kind of get it in the sense that the way it panned out or what it was explained is that, like, Ui was removed from most people's memories, mm -hmm. you know, and then Toka lost the memory of Ui. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. so that initial motivation of I love Ui, you know, actually I love uh, uh, Ira, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're all gonna come together and we're gonna save Ira from the fate of the being a magical girl. Mm -hmm. You know, I could see doing that for somebody you love. You know, mm -hmm. and then once that memory is removed, Nemu had it, it kind of suggested a period maybe of disconnection, desperation, whatever. You know, because Nemu remembered, yeah. Toka did not. Yeah. And Toka just saw all the effects. Of, wow, all these girls need our help. 
Yeah. You know, and, and well, being the, empathetic. The memory enough. was filled with all these false memories, right? Yeah. So yeah, she's yeah, like motivated, true. like, yes, it's successful. We yes. created Embryo Eve. Yeah, it's yeah, like, that's true too, yeah. That was really yeah. dry. Like, I was totally in Nemu's shoes when she was like, what, what about Uli? Yeah. Like, that was fucking devastating the yeah, first time I right. watched it. That I was like, true, yeah. oh my god, no. <laughs> and, the, and, 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 and when the memories came back to Toka, like, oh, oh that the was crushing. Moment. Yeah, so yeah. first she's like overwhelmed with these emotions and is so happy. And then she's like, has this realization of like, Oh fuck! I'm the bad guy. I tried I've to been, kill you. Yeah, yeah. I almost <laughs> succeeded a couple yeah. times. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's it just like a fucking total breakdown at that yeah. point, which is understandable. The you know? overwhelming madness wave that hit her, and there was this beautiful pause right before too. It was like, man, that was done so well. They have, I don't know, man. Something about these directors and writers, they know exactly how to capture, like someone succumbing to madness and despair, like those overwhelming grief kind of emotions, like they're just so good at capturing that. I mean, what better canvas than a nice, innocent, happy-go-lucky, doing the right thing, magical girl to put that on, but like, I, I mean like, uh, some of them have also been involved in projects like uh, Fate Zero, like mm. uh, Gen was the writer for Fate oh. Zero and stuff like this. <laughs> so so good. like, yeah. they 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 clearly like this is their thing, and I think yeah. that's why they're sticking with this and doing more. Like they've got the Walpurgis Rising coming out. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, I think this this is well suited to each of them. <laughs> <laughs> that just means I, I got to follow Gen. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, if Gan's writing anything, it could be a cookbook, and I'm gonna get it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I definitely so. did the thing where I went through and was like. Who the fuck? Ken the Butcher, this is sick. Oh, I love that show. I love that show. Yeah. I, oh, okay, yeah, that, that's him. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I mean, the character development is great, and it's another, like, personal reflection, if it's okay, you know, it's like my own dark history, but I'll be very brief about it. Yeah, yeah sure, so as much I, as you want to share. I ha well, I had a friend who had saved me in, in a very bad position, mm. and we became really close friends when we were very young. Later, he has a child, Without me knowing, he raped his own child. Yeah. And what happened to my brain after that would be <laughs> that I would think of him and have all these warm feelings of love and friendship. Yeah. And then a split second later, not a second, like a yeah. quarter second, I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. die, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, that's a really weird place to be, and I'm not going to call it sane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't reconcile it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, so that's, that's a really horrible place. So I can kind of get having your whole reality turned on its head with some yeah. introduced facts. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And it's like, I can't, and I still, like, all these years later, I'm having trouble with it. Not, at the time, I was a nutcase. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, uh, seeing people go through these, like, having all those memories come back and having to reconcile your actions, like, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hey, that it can about, be a tall order at you, times. Right, ready for a mental breakdown, you know, yeah. and an understandable one at that. So, I kind of get the, like, at least with Toka, I get her kind of turning on a dime for her motivations. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, to do different things. Um, considering what she was subjected to. Yeah. You know, there's, there's that general argument of the essence of what we are comes down to our personality and our memories. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. It's a vast majority, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we're seeing somebody's reality get seriously altered. And instantaneously, too. Yeah. That's very jarring. Yeah. You know? Or at least the closest I can come to those experiences were extremely jarring for me. Yeah. You know, like knocked me out of my shoes, you know, kind of jarring. But, um, so yeah, the, the, the end motivation. So Toka, Nemu, fairly well covered. Um, QB is there as, uh, the, um, how should I put this? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, the devil's bargain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Faust. Yeah, you know, Faustian. He's, he's yeah. The, the Faustian bargain is there. And he has all the justifications, but he has all the justifications somebody would have without empathy. Oh, I want to say, too, mm. the f I fucking hate Kyube so much. <laughs> like, I yeah, love him, but he's so well written to make me hate him. Yes, like, yeah, it's like... He, he made the deal with Iroha, knowing Ui was the one she was helping, and then... He follows them down to the morgue where she's fighting a witch. Mm -hmm. Beats the witch, no problem. It's totally fine. Like she took one hit. Well, okay, it wasn't. She's not even bloody. Like it was totally fine. It right. was a super one-sided battle in her favor. He used that one hit 
to talk to the three girls and be like, you know, you can save her. Yeah. Do you want her to die? I hmm. can help her not die by making yeah. you all magical. Girl. Yeah. Like, so craven. <laughs> oh, Kubei is the ultimate this. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's just like, if I was going to draw art of Kubei, it would be him with his hands, like, over the magical girls, like, <laughs> fight for me. Yeah. You know? Like, his little ears holding them. Yeah. yeah it was like, bastard you know I mean, like, so it's like it's almost like a, a an argument you could see a sociopathic uh, attorney making yeah you know what right. I mean? like see everything i'm saying is accurate and compelling technically and, true and, and technically true <laughs> and, you know i mean as long as you don't have empathy or you know, <laughs> you know we're going to continue the life of the universe you know which right. strangely enough i addressed this question when i was in high school i had a physical science teacher who was a physicist mm -hmm. and we got talking about different theories in the universe and mm -hmm. that kind of depended on how much matter we have and we didn't know the answers mm -hmm. so we could have a universe that just extends out into a heat death mm -hmm. or we could have the oscillating universe theory where it extends out that, that has enough matter pulls back in blows up again blows up mm -hmm. again he explained that even if we did that eventually we would hit heat death mm -hmm. but i remember telling him that i preferred that outcome because it would be a longer extension of life in the universe sure you know mm -hmm. and so i i understand that from wanting the flicker of life to, in organization to some level to continue yeah. is through the Cuba perspective not at heartless human sacrifice right like is it worth it if we continue something likely not forever and make the experience miserable right. kind of like if you're gonna hey would you eric would you rather have you know 70 good happy years of life or 90 years of abject misery All right you know yeah. like dude <laughs> i don't think there's a there's like an, a, there's an emotional lack of here yeah. On the Cubay part. Like, well, that's the key word. Yeah. Because incubators don't have emotions. That's right. the whole thing with their race. So they're like, man, we're telling you about it beforehand. Like, we're letting you, we're giving you the option. And we're giving you a wish. What more do you want? You fucking yeah. ungrateful yeah, humans. It's like, the, the, but it's like, yeah, yeah but you're also, you also know that well enough to lie by misleading and, like, lying by omission. Like, you never technically lie. <laughs> but everything you say is like slightly misdirected or slightly intentionally misinterpreted or like leaving out a key detail that would change the answer if I knew that detail. So yes. clearly you're not really taking this from an objective like, hey, we're doing everything we can to be up front and honest. Point no, of it's you're way, yeah, yeah, it's way manipulative. And yeah. way, there's, there's not enough... It's not by chance that such things get left out after a while. You know, you mm -hmm. can, he had every opportunity to explain it fully and satisfactorily. Oh, yeah. Not to. You know, so it's kind of, you know, that, that's bullshit. But also it's like, there's a moral, and it wouldn't, wouldn't it, Cuba, for me, there's a serious moral point of like, so I'm going to basically put adolescent girls into a, a contract to the death of being a gladiator. Yeah. Like, ooh. That's a pretty low level of, like, usually people that operate at that level in our society are generally considered villainous by almost everyone. Right. You know, I would compare that to, like, a sex trafficking ring or something like that, you know, like, so, obviously, I would never be cool with what has to ha what happens to these girls. Understanding that, like, even if you take Cuba's assertion, like, hey, humanity only had all this progress, it'd be like, you know, we don't have to do it like this. I would say you shout know? out to Dead End Ages, a super brutal, like... Uh, definitely Madoka inspired, like, uh, visual novel, uh, it's brutal. <laughs> Not recommended, but <laughs> okay. definite shout out, because it, it's, uh, basic premise of it is, uh, there's, like, an elite division of the army that's fighting off these aliens, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, they have to use girls of about that age to do it because they can become magical girls and oh, fight. Okay, but yeah, the way yeah. they unlock their powers and utilize their powers is essentially like undergoing sexual assault constantly. Oh, To God, the point dude. where it may stop becoming assault because they're so fucking conditioned. Like it talks a lot about mental breakdown oh, and like the... No. I actually knew one woman. I told you about her. You remember that discussion or not? I like, think so. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's... She was, oof. is it okay on the stream? I, yeah, no rules. Okay. Yeah, she was my neighbor. Many we'll see if we ago. get demonetized. This yeah, is an it's experiment. A, yeah. <laughs> she's my neighbor. It's real life. I don't know. What yeah. the fuck do you want? Yeah, really. This is just how <laughs> things panned out. But like, she was my next door neighbor in a very, very bad part of San Diego. Mm. I don't know how many times she got raped, but she was talking to me about it where it just like she accepted it as a part of her life, <sighs> you know, in a very flat uh. effect kind of a way. 
And it was just, I felt like I was falling down an elevator shaft listening to her. Just yeah. like my gut was like, God, you know. Right. And so uh, that was the only discussion I had so about nature. Shaker be like, no, no that's no, not right. No, it's no, not it's cool. Not Nothing about yeah. this is cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm only like adolescent myself, so I have no power, right? But, right. But I really didn't like it. And I'm like, this is just screwed great ways from Sunday right. so uh, that's kind of what I'm envisioning for the magical girls going through this of like oh yeah I'm just gonna be violated again okay it's Monday you know <laughs> right. like, this is beyond not okay you know so yeah that's dark yeah, yeah I like the dark um, <laughs> I much like my chocolate yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah so uh, talking about motivations we got kind of sidetracked there uh, yeah, the yeah. different groups so we've got your typical uh, Iroha and Yachio kind of motivations. We want yeah, everybody yeah. to stop hurting everybody. Do no harm kind of approach. Yeah. We've Noble. got the yeah. We've got the uh, half of our leadership doesn't remember what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> Mag Magius, um, who are trying like the, the, we'll get into whether or not it's fall, flawed to believe embryo Eve could be useful. To begin with, since it's made from a false memory, we right. can talk about that detail in a minute. But like, mm -hmm. let's assume for now that 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 it could work as it was described by right. Toka. You know, um, sacrifice quite a bit. Hell yes. Industrialize a witch process. Um, push the science on it, but with great consequence at every turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, playing yeah. with fire. Um, and then we have just true psycho, Alina Gray, fuck it all, burn it all down at the yeah, very end. Yeah. So I think we are easily can dismiss Alina's motivations as not the right choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, omnicide. It's like genocide, but for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, nope, no omnicidal uh, motivations will be respected by me. Uh, that's pretty much a uh, given. I'm very sympathetic <clears throat> towards and generally like to root for the bad guys when they have air quotes around them. Hmm. So anytime a, a villainous character has like very clear motivations and like a, a very reasonable and uh, from their perspective ethical point of view of why they're doing their actions, I would side with them over the hero. Hmm. Um, so like... Uh, in the Joaquin Phoenix, I think, is the actor who did the uh, recent Joker. Film. Oh, I haven't seen that yet, but I should. Very good. Highly okay. recommend it. It's not like a normal Batman movie. It's not action-y. It's very character drama and depressing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but in a good way, you yeah. know? Um, so he's not a good guy, but he's definitely who everyone who watches that movie roots for. And is on the right. side of the field. I've been there before. I'm not, it's not a given that I'm going to root for the the bad guy necessarily, mm -hmm. but some motivations are more relatable and not bad. Yeah, you know necessarily. When um, we're in that gray area, I almost a hundred percent of the time will go towards who's supposed to be the antagonist of the story. Mm. Um, I don't know why I do that, but just as my personal bias, I would be in generally favor of saying I support uh, Magius as a group. Oh, I also okay. would say I support the idea of bringing science to this process of magical girls and witches. Mm. So, like, in the original storyline of just, like, Monica Magica, um, and Rebellion to an extent as well, it's purely just this process of uh, inevitable doom, and, mm. like, the way it's fought is through this almost, like, I mean, that's why she's called Gattaca in my home race form, is double home run. <laughs> right. Like, it's a very, like, religious almost approach to, like, we just have to become a god and just change how this works. Like, we have to have faith that we can do it through the power of friendship, through the power of love for each other. Like, not in a bad way, but just, like, that is a much different approach to it than Magia Wrecker took of, like, we're going to quantify how this works. We're going to do research. We're going to build a fucking industry out of how this process works mm -hmm. to farm the fucking grief seeds we need, whether or not that's ethical. <laughs> but like, Seemed unethical, but yeah. I, I really like that approach to the whole situation. The thing that I kept getting caught up on, even as I, as somebody who's predisposed to trying to root for a group like that, um, with all these facets taken into account is that it just, something just seemed off and just wasn't quite right. 
And I think it kind of came down to uh, that the, the motivations weren't thoroughly fleshed out because half the leadership didn't remember what had happened. And the mechanism that they kept being hush-hush about that always made me have pause about trusting them Yes, was because they didn't really understand it. And kind of were forced by memory rewriting to just believe it to work. Believe that they'd yeah. done the homework on it. Yes. But couldn't really explain it. That always felt like rolling dice to me. Yeah. And I don't know, I'm not going to write off a sacrifice for rolling dice. Right. You know. Right. Uh, that's that's just not how my, like, there's this old model of firefighting called the Phoenix model of firefighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you risk a little to save a little. You risk a lot to save a lot. You risk nothing to save nothing. And what that means is, like, if it's just a burning yeah. building, you risk, risk a bit to contain that and not make it go further. If there's people in there, you risk a lot to get them out. Yeah. And if it's just a dead body, don't risk anything over that. Right. You know, I'm sorry that they're dead, but I'm not going to risk human life to try to give a shoe of a body. Right. You know, and so that's, so when you're, when you're applying that same kind of philosophical model of, towards risk, it's like, okay, we're going to kill a whole bunch of people in this city right. for that. Mm-hmm. No, dude. And no, the thing no. is, like the the writing off that they did of like their hand and mm. the damage, it's like I'm super again from my biases partial to the idea of like okay, you know it's kind of an inevitability for most of them. Yeah, like they're yeah. going, they're the weakest too. So it's not even that far off of an inevitability. No, and um, that's sympathy right there. Yeah, no, I get you. But like. You are becoming the hand in the process. And, like, they, they went to repair that. They went thoroughly on how much the uh, Doppel system had prolonged their lives. And I think that that's a good, that even if it led to some of them getting trapped in this half Doppel state where yeah. our uh, uh, coordinator was overseeing, it was later revealed. Mm-hmm. Um and even if some of them were just used to be farmed into grief seeds when right, they did yeah. succumb to it. Yeah. I think that you could argue that overall they probably had longer lives before becoming a witch or dying to one yeah. than if they weren't a part of this group and a part of this doppel system. So I don't think I'm giving full weight to that because I see so much behind the scenes questions just about the the final motivation and the the problem with Embryo Eve as an idea because we don't know that Embryo Eve would even work because you didn't use your powers to create it. You used your powers to use Ui as a vessel. Right. And now there is no Ui. So this is yeah. all on a gamble you don't even know you're taking and you're taking it as if it's a fact like you did the research with everything else which I appreciate, yeah. but it's not. It's and, something different. And also you're dealing with powers that quite frankly you don't fully understand. Yeah. You know? And so almost anything in that case is going to be a gamble. And so if you're dealing with a certain amount of large human sacrifice, I feel almost like Full Metal Alchemist, you're trying to make a philosopher's stone. Right. You know? Yeah, that's like, a very good analogy I'm for like, it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not cool with this. Uh, so that's why, <laughs> there's another reason why I pull back a little bit. And that's because I have a perspective that in the practical world, process matters. Yeah. So the way in which we do things forms our way of looking at things, our morality, and it helps shape the world. Mm-hmm. Um, social forces mm-hmm. is what I'm talking about. So, like, the whole Magius thing, mm-hmm. people were flying blind. Almost everybody underneath was, like, kept in ignorance and right. following, right? Yeah. And I don't like those kinds of models. Yeah. You know, I don't think they lead to good things. Yeah. You know, I think it, it can be even, like, even if you start off with a well-intentioned leader any new leadership could be not so well-intentioned. Power, right. power tends to corrupt, and having a, a league of followers that are just drowned in ignorance and ready to follow you because they kind of have to, Right. that's not a, that's not something I want to set up. Well, and again, that's like this double paradigm of like, as magical girls, probably most of the Black Wings didn't even know that they were going to become witches. They yeah. didn't even know any yeah. of this. Yeah, sure. So from their perspective, they're like, this group has told me so much, they've brought me out of the dark that the QB and the incubators were keeping me in. Mm-hmm. So the very critique I have for them about you're keeping them in the dark because you yourself are kind of in the dark about the true gambles that Embryo Eve <laughs> is. Yeah. Like, they feel like they've been brought into the light just by stepping into this group. So it's like, it's hard to, like... 
I guess I can't criticize the Black Feathers because what's their other option? Just be part of the incubator system? Well, right. Fuck that. Fuck that. Exactly. I, gu- I guess I could say, if I were a magical girl, <laughs> funny, <Yeah. laughs> in that situation, I would definitely leave and go to Magius, who's sure. teaching me how to do the Stopple, who's prolonging my life in this way. But if I were a leader of Magius, I would have issues with how things were being run. Yeah, I don't hold it against the Black Feathers because of the, how you describe it being for them. I hold it against the leadership because, really, I know you may not have as much of a following. I know it might be detrimental to your goal, but I think the right thing to do is to come out and say, look, we have an idea. Hmm. It might free us. It might yeah. not. Right. And the human sacrifice would be great. Yeah. And if you agree with us, and like you're going to extend your life by being here, but we have this ultimate objective, and if you're willing to roll those dice with us, that's... I don't agree with it at that point, but I would be more okay with the leadership's moral compass, yeah. in a sense, you know what I mean? Like, at least I'm dealing with people that are being forthright to their followers, mm-hmm. which I think you owe your followers to do that, to know what they're going to be fighting and bleeding and risking everything for. Even if you are helping them out to survive longer, and it's that shouldn't be a one-way deal where you just use them. Because right. that's the thing. It's a Kantian ethics thing. Kant was a scum, yeah. scumbag. But there are two concepts that he had. <laughs> Universality yeah. and not using human beings as a means to an end. Even, like, yeah. The whole thing, human beings should never be used as a means to an end. They're a means in and of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, or like they're, they're, they're ends in and of themselves, or however it was phrased. What yeah. I'm saying is, like, they're not to be used as tools, is what I'm trying to say. Right. And that... That's being violated and blatantly violated, and I can't agree with any, like, group that does that. Yeah. So that's another thing. I'm much more willing to sacrifice them. <laughs> God! <laughs> I, I actually really like Kant, too. But, like, and so well, that's, I mean, that's a fair point, but... You know, Kant had good ideas. <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking that away, but he was a bigoted asshole in his No, 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 that's what I mean, like, yeah. his philosophy. I really like some of the stuff that I've written, or written, re- bleh, read from him. Right, right. Um, so that's an interesting uh, that you would bring him up in particular, not knowing that beforehand. Yeah, um, I know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, compelling ideas, right? I mean, yeah, definitely, for sure. And it's it makes me question my readiness to sacrifice. I'm very much uh, like it, the the old train tracks problem. There's like a train oh, coming. Right, yeah. There's three guys here, one guy there. Do you divert the train to the one with one guy, or do you right. let it hit the three because then you will have clean hands? Well, you right. probably should divert the train to hit the one guy if they're yes. all tied to the tracks. And yeah, yeah, yeah. One if you have guy. to make the choice of doing nothing or doing something that reduces the death, right. you should reduce the death. But then there's the alternate scenario mm-hmm. where there's a bridge next to it, and there's three workers there, and then there's one really fat guy watching them work. Right. Do you push him off the bridge? To stop the train so the three workers are saved. Yeah, and, and a lot of people flip at that point and yep. say, "No, they wouldn't do that." And it's like, "Yeah, okay, their lives are on the line. I would, I would push the fat man." Yes, <laughs> actually, that's I mean, assuming, and this is the big important thing. I have to know. Yeah, nothing can be yeah, guessed. If here. I knew, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is and for this thought experiment. I He's, know. Super big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know he will stop the train. Okay, yeah. then yes. That's and honestly, you know, another part of this is also I know I'm not going to prison. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I hope the judge would have the same ethics. Yeah, you, it's guess. like I have a certain <laughs> kind of like self preservation <laughs> thing. But okay, but yeah, no, yeah. I I think that's those are the correct decisions to make in a utilitarian way. Right. Um hard though. Yeah. It's, now you're personally responsible. Well, and the thing is, too, once you start talking about what was involved with the Magus uh, scale of sacrifice, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, like even their families of the magical girls that were part of the group were brought in for shelter, and they were being used to farm despair. Yeah. Like, there, it wasn't really focused on, but, like, there was this brief scene where they were talking about how they were being brought in there and essentially, like, put in, like, a dreamlike state. And like their nightmare fuel essentially yes. was being farmed out of them and was being used as part of this industrialized process and it's like <sighs> Okay, that's not really even hurting anyone per se. They're fine. But like we're starting to involve people who aren't even magical girls in this now and yeah. like bring in society as a whole to like extract 
essence from. Oh, yeah, and, <laughs> We're and, starting to get a little beyond it even for me. Yeah, and, and, and my understanding is that the, it would destroy the city if they had done this, right? The yeah. Toka Nemu plan. Yes, it, it, whichever it, city it happened in, it, mm -hmm. would, it was portrayed as being wiping out the whole city. And yeah. I took a look at the map when the map scene is just a couple seconds, mm -hmm. and I paused it and I looked at it, and I talked to Naomi, my wife, and I was like, Hmm. Kind of looks not the same, but it looks kind of like Tokyo, doesn't it? Hmm. It's like yeah, kind of like an alternate Tokyo. It's like the rivers are a bit different, the ports are different, but there's these similarities. Hmm. It just made me think of like you know Tokyo, but not Tokyo. Would you sacrifice a city of that scale? Yeah, like the conurbation of Tokyo, including Yokohama and all these Chiba and all these neighboring cities, is hmm. about thirty-eight million people plus or minus. Jesus Christ. Are you really, are you going to do that? I mean, there hasn't been, I don't know that there hasn't been 38 million magical girls, though, because we see in the original series when they're doing the flashback when she first uh, becomes the Law of Cycles, Monica's going back to, like, ancient Egypt, like, holding, like, ancient Egyptian princesses yeah. and guiding them out of the despair. Probably. Like, that has been going on for so long. Despite like, that length of time, you'd need a huge population over time to get yeah. to 38 million. But beside that, here's the big thing. 38 million dead for sure. Right, Our again, a all, gamble. Like, yeah. That's a hell of a gamble, dude. I don't know that I can take it. You yeah. Know? So that's 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 my take on it, you know? <laughs> I was yeah. trying to come to grips with it. Oh, what a good show. Yeah, yeah. To yeah, totally. circle back to the point I was making earlier about, like, this took a more science and, like, Using the weight, using the weight of science and industry, much like Doctor Stone. Yes. Thank you again for recommending. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, it was, I can't believe I'd forgotten about that show. I'm so glad I was able to circle back to it. Yeah, number ten was uh, episode ten was like a love letter to our industries. Yes. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it uh, it was it it didn't portray it like this, but it's very clear watching it how much. Like, electricity and the gear were, like, such an important part of everything we have. Yeah, really, <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. Foundational. <laughs> yeah. You know, foundational, for sure. Um, but so the the way that uh, Magia record the story took this approach of, like, we're, we're bringing the perspective to this scenario we've already established in Madoka Magica, mm, yeah. what if you had a bunch of really smart girls who got looped into the system and tried to bring science to it and could industrialize a way to try to find a solution? Yeah, which I agree with wholeheartedly. In fact, yeah. if I look at like great problems historically, whether mm -hmm. they're diseases that have wiped out humanity or the fact that there were times when we had very short amounts of food, bread from the air technologies, mm -hmm. these developments. Potato famines. Yeah, potato famines. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so how, how do we, what's our best shot at rectifying this and protecting the human populace? It's been science and technology. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I know that it's been used to dark ends as well, but it is our best shot at actually improving things. In fact... It's the only way we have. Really, I mean, yeah. like, the way I look at modern day Japan and how they come about, and I've said this to people, like, Izanami and Izanagi are the ancient Shinto god and goddess that kind of created everything in mm -hmm. the, in the, in the uh, folklore, the myths. Mm -hmm. But I say the modern day Izanami and Izanagi in Japan are science and technology. You know, and it's sort of, and that has been their Very route yeah. to, you know, a better life. And I gotta say, worked out pretty well yeah. overall. You know what I mean? Not perfectly. Nothing's gonna be perfect. We're dealing with the humans, and humans are messy. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, <laughs> but it is a good way to go. And so, if I'm trying to get out of this predicament, mm. that's the best way, right? I'm also okay. interested in the idea too of like in this short time span. I mean, obviously, this is just where the stories are taking place. But I wonder how much the growing up in a modern culture is affecting the way these girls are looking at the problems. They're not like, oh, I'm in the dark ages. Make my dad not die of consumption. Like yeah. they're 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 trying to do wishes that are more thoughtful and more grand. Mm -hmm. And like, yes, can still be a young girl, like I want the boy to be healed so he can play his violin again and then yeah. fall in love with me. Oh, he fall in love with someone else. Well fucking I'm just gonna become a witch now. Yeah. Like there like, is Sanika, yeah, yeah. but like there's also Monica and Homura yeah. and every one well, of the main four it, in well it, main three in that is a bit of an aside for that how that worked fucked up for Sayaka, I I would be pulling Q Bay by the ears and 
motherfucker, you know, change the witch, right? <laughs> change the witch so she at least gets that. You know, oh, you can't do that? Well, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to come close. <laughs> yeah. you know? Which is probably the worst thing you could do to an incubator. Get yeah. them not quite dead enough to just disappear to a yeah. different body. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like, you're not quite dead. You're you're really fucked up, though. And uh, I'm going to play ping pong with your nuts. You know? <laughs> like, change the witch, motherfucker. You know you can do it. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, not a fan of QBA, but 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 your point honestly it stands like even if I didn't agree when I don't agree with what Maggie was doing in terms of the risk versus benefit analysis, mm -hmm. I think that's the only way you're really going to get out of this, but my appeal and this is in my mind like okay, this shouldn't be isolated to a group of brilliant young girls. Mm -hmm. You know, as yeah. much as a, this should be a Toka wider and Nemo, or Toka and Nemu were mm -hmm. clearly exceptional. Yeah. Her I think human, human society, and I don't know this is not really part of the story, but I feel like human society should be brought into this and like, look, mm -hmm. this is a conflict we are trapped in and are likely to not survive, and we're right. do, making these modifications to try to do it. Look, our lives are on the line constantly. Humanity has benefited from this for millennia. Mm -hmm. Could you support us a bit? Could you try to help right. us get out of this? Well, you know? the thing at the end, too, where uh, Cuba was like, Good job, Iroha. Like everything you did by resolving the conflict, now nobody, everybody's just written this off as like terrorist attacks and super yeah, I remember and that. Yeah, it's like good job. It's all secret still. Right. It's like that's because that would be the end of all this. If like we actually fucking knew, like people would come in and like maybe you would get some shit that has some similar drawbacks to what Magius was trying to build, mm -hmm. but like. We, we could have any, every girl could be educated about this and know if an incubator comes and have a photo that they've seen of what they look like because they all look like the fucking same. Yeah. <laughs> Very racist, I guess to say. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> they literally do that. Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you say. It's, species. It's, it's a different species, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to, yeah. <laughs> so, like, if they come to you and make this offer, <clears throat> you need to consult your local magical girl representative first so we can make sure to tactfully use these wishes as a form of experimentation, as a form of trying to resolve this in a way that can stop needing little girls as sacrifices going right. forward. Like, the whole fact that this is still kept amongst ourselves as magical girls, I think, is a major failing. Yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely say so. It's it's convenience to keep it going, perhaps, for, like, the incubators. Yeah, for sure, for them. Like, fuck them. Yeah, you know, right. I'd be like, I, I, like, this is the kind of thing that I think... The cute cats are the enemy. <laughs> I think about, yeah, really, I think about 75%, roughly, of humanity across the world would be righteously pissed if they yes. did, right? I mean, be oh, like, yeah. So we would all be ready to use our, our sources of, of energy and, and finance and governance to support them, mm -hmm. you know, to try to get out of this. And, and not only that, but, like, there'd be a lot of... I think there would be, in most nations, I think there would be an immediate program of making the families whole. Like, yeah. your, your daughter oh, died, yeah, she died, sure. she died a hero, and now... Like Veterans Plus. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna... Like, we didn't want her to die, but we're gonna take care of you. You know, so, yeah. Probably shouldn't see that. Trying to form. Plus, such a problem would be worthy of all of the world's most brilliant minds dedicating to themselves in great intellectual toil to figure out what to do about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we would hope. <laughs> yeah, we, we would be like, we should be wrapped up in that, you know? Ah. Oh, no. Fuck. Come I was really it. curious about that one, though. At some point, I hope you tell me about that. There was a hybrid script that you saw. Yes, I'm trying to find where it is. So I, I believe, at least, I wrote down the translation as well. There was some at the end, which, uh, funnily enough, does not... Uh, it goes straight to English. Instead of going to the, like, Romanized Japanese first. Oh, okay. But, uh... God damn. <clears throat> I thought it would come up here. I guess I should have checked that I had this ready first. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I didn't see it. Maybe I didn't, just didn't get, didn't catch it. And also, uh, I did watch a little bit of it with Naomi, but she was falling asleep. Mm. So, you know... <laughs> eventually I just let her go, you know? <laughs> okay... <laughs> So it's when they are, they first get into, uh, the, uh, Magius area, 
they make it through that, um, like, roving entrance, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and when... Um, Let's go back to our cheat sheet here because they didn't really focus on our side characters in the last two seasons. Okay. Uh, Maybe when I can help. Kane and Rena. Oh, right, right, gotcha. <laughs> they were running um, via, and one of them, I think it was. Uh, Kade was Kade? coming, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, she, she, had, she had done something to betray. She had the, like, black magic. Yeah. Or no, yeah. Rena did. Because oh, Rena did, okay, her. but yeah, but I remember but Kade, Kade was Kade one was that was. Did, yeah. did she, you could see it in her shadow. It was going multicolor and dark and everything, and the, she was, like, falling down, bad energy and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Underneath that, they had a uh, series of texts that was in the witch's text. Oh, okay. And that stuff translated. Um, there's like a brief moment at the end where it goes to. Uh, let me see if I search English if it comes up. Man, I don't know. So unfortunate. Well, you could paraphrase it if you remember. I don't remember. It was a little oh, funny. okay, okay. That might meet and for another time. Yes, we will, <laughs> we'll have to bring that up another time. So that, that goes. Uh, It'll be in my video. I'm gonna make a long form video about Maji Record, but cool. Uh, we'll hit it then. Yeah. Just a little incentive okay. for you to watch that fucking probably hour long video. I will. <laughs> I, I was gonna do it anyways. <laughs> in the uh, last scene, though, um, there's the text at the very end. That's the witch's text. Yes. And that translates directly to English. So when you decode it, um, okay. There, there was a brief moment in the tunnels area where it actually flashed to uh, what it translated to. Um, so, like, you had a couple of characters you could start decoding from there oh, and okay. guess the rest. I don't oh, know okay. if this is how we originally decoded. I have a vague memory of before mm. around the time, I think, when Magia Records started, we had some decoding that was going on, but mm. I think it was mostly kind of guess and check different decoding methods that people were just trying out for fun. Oh, okay. Um, and this last shot, uh, so like each one of the witch's characters goes to a, a an English letter. There's mm. other ones too, but most of them are just letters, the 26 <clears throat> letters there. Okay. Um, and the last one translates to see you, and then at the bottom it says, until the day we meet again. Oh. And it's okay. like, okay. Cool. So, uh, less weighty than the other one, which I, I feel quite ashamed I can, didn't have ready to bring up, but... <laughs> yeah, but it'll be the other one, and I'll, uh, I really want to know, so I'm definitely... <laughs> even if I wasn't going to, now I absolutely would. So, yeah. Um, so going to, uh, again, just sort of thoughts of uh, the series as a whole, is there anything you thought about how... Um, like the original characters were kind of wove woven into the story. What did you think about? I guess we haven't talked about the hybrid Uwasa magical girls. Oh uh, right for uh for um mommy uh, mommy and, uh, and uh, Tsuru. Suruno. Yeah, Suruno. Yeah, it took me a second. Gosh, bon Bonsai Girl. Yeah, 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 I have to work on her as well. Mommy did. Yeah, I will I, never not think of her as Bon Bonsai Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that works, because it's like, I need, I need a little help. Um, but, so, like, I, I thought it was really cool, all right? There's a few elements the way they did it that that was really good. Mm -hmm. So, Suruno was always like, we saw her as, I'm the strongest energy and everything. Yeah. But let's be honest about ourselves out there. You know, in this this difficult world that we live in, sometimes everybody puts on a facade. Yes. Also, it's not just for others; it's also sometimes to psych ourselves up. Yeah. I've known. I've seen that. Make it till you make it. Baby. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> that in some of the harsh situations I've been in, particularly. I see it more amongst men. Mm -hmm. You know, but like to be like, yeah, I'm uh, I'm tough. You know, it's like mm -hmm. okay. You're bleeding out, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of you're you're psyching yourself up because you know this is really a. Of situation, mm -hmm. you know, and so it, that's one thing, and I could see Tsuno kind of going in that direction, mm -hmm. but everybody, not maybe not Yachio at least, mm -hmm. kind of initially bought into that, yeah, and didn't dig any deeper, and that was the really uncanny, like you know, she's all broke, broken up. Yeah. I'm the strongest. I'm okay. Right. Like, wait, you're not okay. <laughs> you know, and a deeper look at what was going on. It's like oh, that's such a good uh, point because she still says that right yeah. after the failed connect. Yes. So it's like that's a really way to like spotlight what she didn't understand about her too. Right. It's not just her personality still coming through in the situation, which I didn't really fully appreciate until just now. It's such a good point of like 
That's yeah. what you're missing. You're missing the fact that she's gonna say she's the strongest and ready to fight and be you when she's like broken in every joint. <laughs> yeah. Like Exactly, you know, and it's it's like holding on to that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, wait a minute, this is what you need to see beneath. And we're all human. Mm-hmm. And of course she had her own like survival guilt and, you know, the uh, this driven ability to have to like I'm gonna save everyone by digging deeper and, you know, like I don't care how much it hurts I'm going to be strong enough kind of a, you know what I mean but also at the same time feeling fear and pain and doubt and all that stuff that you're not sharing anymore mm. you know sometimes we wall ourselves off and I've done it mm. a lot of us have like, introverts myself I yeah. think we're more given to do that yeah me too you know so it's kind of and it can be a survival mechanism mm-hmm. you know so they had to see into that a bit and really can make a deeper bond with her before they could break her from the Owase. Mm-hmm. You know, and in some ways it was easier for them to break mommy out. Yeah. You know? So. But I will say the way they animated it, it was it looked so much riskier to try. Oh, with the sword mommy. to mommy. Yeah, it's like yeah, like <gasps> right into her soul gem. Yeah. Like Jesus. <laughs> it's like, yeah. hope it works. But yeah, it's like this better work. <laughs> or it's gonna be catastrophic. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, you're gonna be like sitting with her head on your sword. Ooh, <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, worth a shot. Let's go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what happened after that, too. I like the way that, um, given how they went in this direction of, like, they built up all of these things involving Wallace, uh, Walt Pergasnot. It's got to combine. And then, oh, no, this new hybrid version also going to use it. And then they just ditch Walt Pergasnot, and the clouds clear above head because it's already been resolved over there by probably Madoka. And we go about our lives. If that's the direction they were going to go, I love how right after they get Mommy out of the hybrid state, all the original characters just kind of shuffle back out, and they're like, well, we got to get back to Mitakihara, we got to yeah. prepare and make sure we can fight off, well, Perkis not because it's headed back that way now. Right, yeah. Like, what an elegant way to exit them out of the story. Yeah. Let the story wrap up all these new lines of intrigue gets brought up and develop and conclude all these different characters and then we already know what happened in the other story we didn't need to be shown anything about that to know another tragic tale of Madoka succumbing Homura wasn't enough whoever all their friends were alive so actually fucking Sayaka Kyoko and Mami with Homura weren't enough right like which is I don't think we'd seen a storyline where I mean, it's uh, implied there's infinite timelines that she essentially went through, so there probably were some, but I don't think we've been shown any yet where all four of them were alive. Even in our main timeline, Mommy's dead. Although I do remember one of the uh, attempts, Homura had set up a bunch of surface-to-air missiles... Yes. You know, and, oh, and, and that Walt, was such a sick scene. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Walt Perkis knocks, like, boom, 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 boom. Right. You know, like... <laughs> What? <laughs> it, like, took no damage, even when it got, like, hit by a rocket and, like, shoved just by the force of the rocket into a stadium that was made up of nothing but remote-activated bombs. Right, yeah. But, like, despite being physically in all of that and yeah. being moved by it, it, at no point showed any signs of taking damage. Exactly. Like, it was just kind of, yeah, it, it, it was a brush, you know, and I'm like, what the hell are you gonna you know <laughs> it's like the, the next evolution here is nuclear right <laughs> you know? yeah really it's like in my rewatching of uh Maji record for this to take all these notes like i kept thinking about you're you guys are just assuming you're just gonna waltz up to walsburg it's not and just absorb it yeah like, I'm I'm that too. I'm this like... was my first <laughs> seed of doubt that made me start to question how assured they were of embryo Eve in retrospect because like they don't really know what it is it, it's all false memories it wasn't the plan right. and the only one who remembers this Nemu is like so depressed about it like she's not taking any <laughs> responsibility or leadership in the group she's yeah. just kind of there tur- churning out Uasa and just letting that be her contribution and just hoping it goes well right. like she's super dejected <laughs> yeah. about the yeah. whole thing <laughs> right not only that but I had the same exact doubts I'm like I could see this very easily being Embryo Eve shows up and while Pergus not just rips it in half. Right. You know. Absolutely. Like, well, Perkersnack was represented as sort of just almost, uh, it reminds me of the the conceptual, you know, like the irresistible force. You yeah. know, that physics idea, yeah. what happens when the irresistible force meets the immovable object, it yeah. pass, passes through it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> I've uh, never heard that answer. That's yeah. actually true. But, <laughs> wow. But, you know, I have, I have other answers. It can also be irresistible but choose to shoot 
You know what I mean? Like, it made mm. the choice to move. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it had its own determination. Like, the pattern was preset. Sure. You know what I mean? Anyway, but that, that, I digress. What I'm getting at is, like, the irresistible... <laughs> Fucking engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the irresistible force is Walpurgis Knock, and yeah. I don't know what you have in mind, but... I'd be ready for some disappointment. <laughs> yeah, I was intrigued by the merging and absorbing aspect, so it's not right. really you have to beat it and overcome it. Yeah. But, like, even that, I don't know, yeah. that's a very tall order. Like, <laughs> yes. I don't know that this was, like, the best plan. Like, did you guys really know how devastating Walpurgis Knot was going to be? Right. Like, I Because it seemed like our main cast in, in the main series, the only one who really understood was maybe... Hube, mm. um, but also Homura because she'd seen it. Yeah, that I was say, Homura was the only magical girl that had that. And then after, and this is the thing too, what did that do to Homura after all those attempts? Uh, yeah. Sitting here like, nothing could phase that girl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how to, I have seen hell. <laughs> you know? Like, well, yeah, really. It's like, I could just jump a dead body on the ground and be like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing to me so I mean so yeah a lot of the, the plan there are a lot of doubts a lot of doubts and a tremendous amount of sacrifice um, I was totally okay with how the uh, the original cast of five came in mm-hmm. and got removed I thought they were portrayed in a really badass way yeah. when Sayaka and Mommy fought they were just friggin awesome you mm-hmm. know like honestly they, they seemed stronger than they ever were in the other series to me yeah like mommy yes. was just so, she was straight up mommy finally got her heyday yeah i mean she had a little bit in rebellion that sweet scene she had with homero where they fought was really oh epic, yeah but yeah. like i mean this was on a whole nother level no this, this really <laughs> did make me think of gilgamesh from fate yes you know, yeah, absolutely it's just like <laughs> absolutely. meet the battalion <laughs> you know, like, holy crap that's a lot of firepower you know and so it, it, so that and then Sayaka was awesome you know mm-hmm. you, we've talked about that before but it's, you know, that she was extremely determined and you know <laughs> and they were working together to try to get to mommy you know which is mm-hmm. a hell of a team effort to begin with so they were portrayed as really badass they came in they left and they kind of it was a good way to deal with them I think because we do need that mechanic from Homura Yes. And if we're going to involve them, it's nice to involve them as who they were. We kind of got a snapshot from Homura, I think, in the infinite continuums of maybe an earlier Homura, because she still seemed a little awkward. Yeah. You know? Like, um, it wasn't just that she had the old hair, mm-hmm. because, like, she has to undo that every timeline. And once you got to a certain point, she just undid it immediately. Right. <laughs> but, like, um, I feel like there was probably a very seasoned Homura that still had the pigtails going on. Oh, okay. So, like, before she started fully just being like, fuck it, I hate everything, this is all bullshit, yeah. I'm just it for Modica, I'm yeah. gonna focus like a laser. I feel like that's what the hair delineation is. So, like, oh, okay, that's what she probably was still, f- like, or she could have been, like, still fairly seasoned. And there were a couple moments early on where she had this, like, internal monologue we got to hear about, like, well, how do you guys know what the fuck's going on? How do you know what the weird yeah. related to witches? Although, although, when she did fight with uh, um, um, Monica, uh, Monica and um, Sayaka and that against that witch, where she froze time, mm-hmm. she she just to me didn't seem like full late game Homer. Exactly, yeah. that's the point. I I'm totally and, agree. And I'm not saying if, uh, really my snapshot of her is somewhere in between where she hasn't gotten hardened as steel yet. Yes. But she's not at the very beginning because she can still... Yeah. She knows what's fight. going on. Yeah. She kind of can fight, but yeah. like she's not... She wasn't the most useful of the team. No. And like when she needs to be like in, in the mainline series, she is the most useful of the I was going to say, her power <laughs> is really like... It, it, it's something that would have a, a learning curve to it. Yes. To really get to master it. Mm-hmm. But once you do, you're S-tier. You know, yeah. like, she just had a tremendous amount of power there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's, so that was interesting to see play out. I was totally cool. I, I, I have no complaints about how the original five were all wrapped in. I thought uh, Sakura was funny, because she always is kind of out for herself, grabbing the grab of a uh, bag of uh, grief seeds and mm-hmm. grabbing the other two and running. You know, like, it's like Felicia and the other girl, and it's like, come well, on, let's go! <laughs> yeah. yeah I, we'll make it worth your while! <laughs> if the show weren't so fucking good... Kyoko definitely would have been my favorite character if it were oh, mediocre. Right, right. Like just like the the general like she just she she wields a pocky 
Like most anime characters, wield a cigarette. Like no doubt, dude. <laughs> no doubt. And it's, I thought it was great how she had the churro sticks, and she's like, "Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're here for a minute. Eh? You might as well be in a churro." <laughs> Who? And I forget which one of it, but one of them maybe it was Felicia or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I yeah. won't take one. One of them was like, like, "Yeah, the other one is Watashimo. Me too." You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, so, uh, then I would. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have a ki- uh, Kyoko around because you, you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Like, it a little chill to it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, and okay, so for other characters that wound up, I mean, if it's fun yeah, to transition to that. Kind of freeform here. I, I actually liked Mifuyu as a character. I, oh, I, I like yes. how she developed. It was kind of heartbreaking how she died, you know, and it was but a noble sacrifice. Her, know? both her and uh, Momoko going oh, yeah, up at the same time, yeah. it was like, oh, I didn't see that fucking coming. Like, yeah, that I, was... I definitely got the, like, okay, Yachio's heading out. How are they going to deal with this? Like, I I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting that. Yeah, and, yeah. Whew, man, the, the, shit. <laughs> the human sacrifice angle hit hard in that one. And at, at that point in time, after seeing Mifuyu's storyline, I found her very relatable. Yeah. I, I could see why she would get involved in the Magius. I could get, see yeah. why she had all these doubts, you know. And, she and probably was actually the true, like, viewer insert character. Yeah. Because, like... What, what would you do? You probably would support Magus at the start, but then you might be high enough up as a white feather to see there's some issues yeah. and I have questions and then I also relate to some of these. Uh, yeah. Also, I could relate to her midway through with a glass of something. It's like, Mufuyu getting drunk? You know? Do you what remember? was this? No, there, I don't that, remember. A scene where she's oh, no, back. yes, I do, when she yeah. was down with Embryo Eve. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I just assumed that was alcohol for Yeah, me yeah. too. I'm like, I, I could see myself in the same position. Drinking like, yourself into a stupor, like, yeah. It's very relatable. <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is, I am helpless to change how fucked up everything is, so, uh, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I guess I'm just gonna lay here and watch the carts of witches go by yeah. <laughs> into the mouth of this monstrosity I've helped create. Yeah, All right, well, okay. fucking A. Comfortably numb. <laughs> you know? yes. Hopefully. I mean, she didn't look comfortable. It looked comfortable. Yeah, um, it's, it's the best you could do, right? Um, the, uh, towards the end where Yachio is seeing all of her dead comrades in the train oh, right after yeah, yeah. Uh, Nemu and Toka hit uh, Embryo Eve, mm. or a- Embryo Alicia. Yeah. Um, like, the, there was this, like, moment where she's talking with the original two, who had died yeah, long, Mel and the long before girl. this, yeah. not necessarily long before, but before, before. the series started. Yeah. Um, and then it swaps, and then their seat, uh, row of seats back. And yep. then currently in front of her, then are Mifuyu and Momoko. Yeah. And it's like... She's just talking to them, and she's talking to them about, like, hey, do you want to move in to the place? Like, she's not yeah. getting it. And then there's, like, that very last moment where you see this pause, and, like, it clicks that, like, they're here because they're dead. Right. And it's just like, oh. Yeah, it's like, I'll live in the living room. I'll be in the living room. Me and the living room, you know, it's kind of, which is another clue of, like, you yeah. know, I'll be with you, but not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was so yeah. brutal. Like, I I also would say uh, that um, the two things that were happening in those scenes, kind of back to back, they were bouncing between uh, Ui and Iroha. Yeah. Because Ui rode that train to death too in the baby cube. Yeah. Um, she's like having this similar moment with Iroha, where she's like, "I'll always be with you in the smiles of other people," which seems yeah. like a much more like just singing it, like, you can find, like, out, like, Madoka will always be watching over you, blah, 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 kind of thing. Like, the, then, there's the immediate, like, oh, here, I'm using Ui's power to collect, like, a fucking, uh, spirit bomb from (laughs) Dragon Ball Z from all the nearby (laughs) magical girls and use that power to then plot drive a fucking grief seed into the heart of what's left. Like... (laughs) So I, I, it kind of confused me a little bit in how much what that um, first shot at Embryo, um, Embryo Alicia? Is that her name? Green hair girl? Embryo, oh, oh. Um, the crazy Alicia, one. Uh, uh, I'm Alina, saying Alina Gray. Alina, Alina. Alina Gray. I'm thinking of Felicia. Felicia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Alina, know. Embryo Alina. Um, the, the shot that drives into her from them. How much was that related to 
creating this thing that then Iroha can literally use some of Ui's power. Mm -hmm. And how much was Yachio's interaction triggered by that? But that power was already within her because, as was explained on the train interaction, like you're you're not cursed by your power. Your power is a gift to carry us forward. Because right, yeah. like afterwards, she has all the different colored bows related to those girls on her weapon. Mm -hmm. So like she clearly is carrying their powers forward. And in the game too, again briefly learned by me from the wiki, oh. um, her power is to take the power of her fallen comrade. So when oh. someone dies, she kind of absorbs their power. Okay. Um, so how much was that always inherent to her? Versus related to this thing that Ui and Iroha are going through. Hmm. Um, this led me to kind of like feel like that that ending sequence was kind of overall a little rushed. Okay, and like maybe yeah. they could use one more episode to uh, flush out. Um, fuck, I keep I want to say Alicia again. <laughs> Alina. <laughs> Alina, thank you. Well, uh, yeah. to flush her out and then also kind of delineate, even if it's done the exact same way maybe put a little bit more space between those two scenes mm -hmm. so that way it's not as confused. I could see a lot of people mm -hmm. getting confused by that. And I, I was well, a little confused I, by it too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an easy answer for that, how much power is coming from what. I don't think it's delineated. Yeah. You know, so... I'm, yeah, we're I'm not, spoiled for choice in this series of like so many things being so thoroughly flushed out and sure. developed and it's like... Well, it's an important mechanic because it kind of <laughs> comes to the end through that mechanic, right? So yeah. how much of it is just... It's strange, because Yachu's wish was to survive, right? Yes. I could see how that could get folded into, if not, it's kind of a gray zone where mm -hmm. she's going to survive, but I could see how that would fold into absorbing other things, you know what I mean, like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, it's, if it's not the direct wish, it's adjacent to it. Yeah. You know, it's not a big leap. Well, it's similar to how uh, so, Sayaka from the original series is so good at healing because her wish was related to healing. Like she yeah, didn't necessarily yeah, yeah. wish to heal herself, mm. but yes, but but it's still a ut utilitarian sort of way. It's there. Mm -hmm. So maybe Yachio was set up for that, and maybe her interactions with Yoroa were an amplification. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, you know. But that, that's a thought. <laughs> yeah, hard to say. Speculation. That, that, we're in the speculation. Definitely so. uh, hardcore speculation for me. At least, I don't even know much anything about the game. Yeah, you know? me either. Again, I, I'm citing things passively from the wiki, but I don't really know. I haven't like read on the wiki in depth or anything like that, trying to get a whole grasp of it. I just hopefully it'll get a reboot one day and I can catch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would definitely be interested. Hell, there is a game that looked really good graphics wise. Mm -hmm. that you looked like a magical girl was the main character, but it was like a broad RPG. Hmm. With beautiful vistas, waterfalls, green fields, and everything where you're f jumping through it. Nice. And, uh, so near. Yeah, kind of. Well, it's <laughs> but, but, you know, I plan on playing with my daughter, actually. Oh, nice. You know, Sweet. like, I think it could be, she likes RPGs, she, she likes pretty things like that, and I think, I like RPGs, so it might be something we can do. Yeah, perfect. You know, um, I would, if I remember the name, I'd tell you. My, uh, Nomi showed it to me. So, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, and uh, it's only a Japanese name at the time, so might take some doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will yeah. say I'm interested in how much of what has a after watching Maji Record, the level of love that was put into this and thought that was put into this, it's so clearly meant to be bookended by the ending. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the last we'll hear. I mean, it's even said that no one will ever know this. This is yeah. our story, and it will never be told outside of just now. It seems like a pretty conclusive ending. I wonder if there will be any, like, cameos almost from some of these characters in the upcoming Walpurgis Not Rising. Oh, oh okay. That's They're possible. in a different city. I don't see where necessarily the interaction would happen, but if for some reason they're on a trip somewhere, trying to maintain this illusion of a normal world that Homer's created, they're on some sort of field trip that takes them through a different city, and they mm. might see some of the girls in the background <laughs> or briefly interact, there might be some interesting uh, moments that could happen there. Um, and I would wonder uh, if there would be inter any interaction or like casual, like, knowing glances from Homura kind of <laughs> what had happened because I, I would say as well I've thought about um, mostly on the second viewing how much like Homura is seems disinterested in everything that's going on in this nearby city mm. like this whole system and like doppels and then the connect amplifying power and stuff which isn't in the main line 
So clearly it's just happening in that city just like the doppels. Like, what... If I had come across that, and I was on Homer's mindset of trying to figure things out and find the eventual path that could lead us to a place where Madoka's not a magical girl and not dead. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would want to come back to this city and try to see what the fuck's happening here and try to explore what's happening here. Mm. And I don't know that this would happen every time. Like, there was some discussion about, like, if this is unique to this one run-through. I wondered that myself, or if it was more consistent. If if there was um, any way that it even could have been prompted, like, I mean, with the number of times she went through timelines, yeah. like, I would have spent at least five deaths here, <laughs> yeah, like, really. you know? <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's definitely worth looking into. I mean, from my perspective, I agree with that. And as far as him being uh, kind of hemmed in, um, mm-hmm. f- whew, I can't say what will happen. Mm-hmm. But this is what I where we get into real world considerations. Mm-hmm. If any of the characters are popular enough, or there's a clamoring enough, mm-hmm. then maybe they'll. You know, I'm not sure. Like, how long ago did uh, Moggy Record finish up? Let's see. Let's pull that up right it's, now. It's fairly recent, right? I mean, the anime, not the game. Yeah. Because that's another there was, thing. There was a significant spacing between um, when each of the three seasons came out, which is why I think there really was a division between season two and three. So uh, okay. the first season came out in uh, early 2020, second season in fall of 2021, and the last season at the start of, or I guess spring 2022. Okay. Yeah. So the, it finished up fairly recently, but it's been around for a few years. And when mm-hmm. is uh, Walt Burgess Knock Rising hitting? Uh, I don't know that they've set an actual date yet. I, they might have said this year. Oh, I'm spelling this wrong. Essentially, if there's enough, uh, if there's enough time, then it gives us a better chance for audience response, and and they could just uh, uh, sew some characters into the timeline because they like them. You're even yet. Okay, so I would say, we, uh, my opinion, I think we have a fair chance, you know, because it's come to a conclusion. They're not done, and you mm-hmm. know, they could have already put a character into their work a year ago just because they got the Magia record out and they decided, you know, they paid attention to the community and saw that people like, and I don't know in the community like what magical girls people like. You know, yeah. there's a few that I happen to like. Yeah. Um, I, I do like Kuroe, even mm-hmm. though she's died. You know, and, yeah. and it's kind of... Um, I do like Mufuyu again, dead. <laughs> Try and line. Um, but no, I, I like Hachio. Um, I like, I like, I like, like all Felicia. Of, yeah, she's, 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 she's funny, you know. Yeah, she's good comic relief. Yeah, she is, But right? still very tragic backstory, so she hits yeah. all the things. Yeah, that's true. You know, I wouldn't object to anybody being wrapped into it. You know what I mean? But wouldn't like, mind seeing a little Ren and Kaede totally just best friends, just like uh, yeah, Yoko that... and Sayaka, totally just best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also red and blue and red and blue, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, you know, I mean, the, all of it would be pretty cool. I, like, a lot of times in these broad cast of character kind of anime, there, or video games, there'll be at least one or two characters that I at least dislike or just sort of dispassionate towards. Mm-hmm. That's not the case here. I, I can't yeah. look at that and really... I don't dislike anyone, mm-hmm. you know, so go for it, I'm thinking. You know, that's Sana, uh, the big shield girl, mm-hmm. is probably the one I feel the least attachment towards, per se. But, like, I feel like that is her character. Like, her whole thing was, like, She's this, like, isolationist, doesn't want to leave the Uasa to the point where the Uasa is, like, trying to kick her out. Yes, I remember <laughs> like, that, yeah. So the fact that she's in a group is kind of, like, a big step for her. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I, as I look over the cast of characters we have pulled up, it's just, like, she she's probably the only one that I wouldn't be, like, oh, my God, it's her. But then, yes, I would, because especially if she's just passing by and not interacting, like, what an Easter egg that would be. Because that's perfect for her character. So, that's like, true. I don't know. Yeah, and they, for me, I feel like they chose her power really well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, shield, stay away! <laughs> I know that, too, we mentioned in the last uh, video stream that the uh, game itself is ending. They're concluding the game. Mm-hmm. Um, they already have for English, but it's also wrapping up for Japanese, too. Right. Um... I don't know if that's a sign that uh, it wasn't popular enough, 
I know there's a lot of oversaturation of the gotcha market, and it is a gotcha style game. Okay. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know that it did bad per se, or just not good enough, or they they made their initial spike of profit from it, and then they're mm-hmm. just putting an end of life kind of state. Right. Um. So I just to your comment earlier about. Uh, I wonder if the popularity of any of these characters can cascade them into yeah. some sort of a cameo. I wonder if they were strong enough during the run, or if the sign that it was just a run and not still ongoing means we're not going to see much more of them. It would be a shame if we never see any more of these characters. They've done was, such yeah, a good job developing I, I, them. And I mean, the thing of it is, too, uh, I hope... How much do they know what they have here? Because you can do other things with it on... Go for the games, no problem. Go for any sure. kind of media merchandise, whatever you got to do, whatever you want to mm-hmm. do. But really, I think the most like legendary, epic milestone they set was that first anime with Madoka Magica. Yeah, you know, and that is become sort of famous and has a cult following, and yeah. just you know. And so <laughs> here we are, the cult following. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we we have a second anime, so hopefully they know. Hey, we have a real shot at having protracted interest in other things we might do by mm-hmm. bringing them in. So that's logic, too. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they may want to do more things with the franchise in the future, and I don't know mm-hmm. what that might be. Yeah. You know, um, hopefully they at least keep uh, an open mind to continuing the world in some sort of anime form. Mm-hmm. Because if you do the story well, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and I, I they got, if they got... Gen the Butcher, then I think... <laughs> right. And clearly, yeah. Walpurgis Not Rising is the main focus right now for them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I get why, because it's the main line story, you mm-hmm. know? But um, I, w- I would like to see, if that goes well, uh, a return to this side world that we have and see some more things going on with them. I wonder if this could be, like, a playground for new mechanics they're testing out, like the Doppel system. If they have any other kind of interesting ideas, I wouldn't mind seeing another new mechanic tested out in this city yeah. as opposed to our mainline city. That would be interesting. I'd like to see Doppels for all five of the original girls. Yes. I think the <laughs> game... So I had noticed this just in passing actually today when I was prepping some of the stuff. Uh, some of the wiki entries for the pages, if you're on the right wikis, have a photo of their Doppel form mm-hmm. readily available. Oh, really? And like, okay. there was one for Mommy that looked different than what we had seen in the shows. So I actually wanted, after this is oh. done, to go through and see if there's one for some of the other characters. I don't know if you can... I don't know if all five of the main characters are playable. And yeah. if they are, they probably have a Doppel that's yeah. available, I would imagine. I don't know what Homer's sure. Doppel looks like. <laughs> probably, probably like that witch she became. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Okay. But I forgot about I that. I wonder if it, it would, though, because it seems like the circumstances of the end of the magical girl's life mm-hmm. plays heavily into what their witch form is. Oh, yeah, it's funny. The, the witch discussion. I actually t- talk with Nomi about that a bit. Like, mm-hmm. what kind of witch would I be? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what would the internal world be? It would probably be some really demented combination of souls and anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be grisly and horrible, you know? But... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was also talking about the general phenomenon of being a reflection of the psychology of the, the former magical girl. You know, mm-hmm. really f- interesting thing. So, but you seem to be right. The emotional state has something to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that would be interesting to see. It leads me yeah. to wonder too, just about the doppel. So the doppel, like, may, maybe this could be in part of why the doppel doesn't necessarily look like the witch forms super closely, mm-hmm. um, because like. The doppel's coming out kind of prematurely. So, like, it's reflecting your witch form at the time. Mm. And maybe over time, the source of your grief kind of shifts or develops into a deeper-seated thing that's, like, more rooted in something else. And mm. it kind of changes what your ultimate witch form could look like. Yeah, not only that, but if you look at Kuroe's experience and how mm-hmm. she sort of just became a pyre of grief, yeah. right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, the rise. I don't know yeah. that I've ever seen something equivalent of that. Like, I guess Saika had kind of, like, an explosive flood when she transformed. Mm-hmm. But that was so, like, seeing it so unidirectional. Yeah. <laughs> I think it probably was just because it couldn't, she couldn't actually transform. So she just spiked up until she broke the barrier, and then the transformation happened. Right. But still, I've never seen anything like that. What a moment that was. Yeah, it was really interesting how long it lasted, and how big it became, you know? It yeah. kind of makes me wonder how much potential there is for different magical girls, depending on what's going on. Yeah. You know? 
but who knows? I also um, really liked the touch too. Like I don't, I, I don't necessarily like the idea of the writing the before Yachio put her influence on it. Um, how it was just like a giant grief sea missile. <laughs> it was like, and it kind of took me out of the moment a little bit of how kind of it felt comical and in a very serious moment. But like, I really liked upon my second viewing how that grief seed was clearly the grief seed of, uh, oh fuck, names. Why are names so difficult? The girl we were just talking about, the black feather. Cool away. Kuroi, okay, sorry, you. sorry, yeah, I um, lost for a second. Because Bri- we, there was a lot happening in those sequences, but the kind of last time we saw Iroha was at the start of the episode. She mm. was just looking down at the black Magius symbol and her grief seed after oh. she had killed her in the, at the yeah, end of the last episode. Know, I that, yeah. So she must have pocketed that grief <laughs> seed, and that grief seed was what she used, and then Yachio fused her powers into to finish off Embryo Eve. Right. Okay. That makes 100% sense. It's the only one we know that she had, you know? Yeah. So, God, what a rough way to get it. Uh, <laughs> worth the cost? Uh, uh, I don't yeah. think so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. Um, yeah. So that. Good show. So we're, yeah. we're feeling it's in the... I, I'm comfortable saying 9 to 9.5. Yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> what I went up on it. Yeah, you know, and I, I could argue about it at that point. It's a conditional 9 to 9.5. If you haven't seen the mainline series, um, 8.5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it's like that. And it's funny because I run into these situations. I feel the same way about Fate. Like, mm-hmm. the Fate Stay Night is, to me, I'm sacrilege here. It's okay. You mm-hmm. know, and Fate Zero is great, but knowing the oh, Fate universe, it helps to make Fate Zero excellent. I will say, uh, I feel like it's kind of the reverse... And to, to your point, it's kind of the reverse of here. It's like, uh, you're going to get so much more out of this experience if you've seen Madoka Magica. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know anything about Fate, you can watch Fate Zero and not need to know anything and get the oh, full see, ride. Yeah. And, the, and you could go back to any other Fate. It would probably make you want to watch, watch Fate. the other Fate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a really good point. You could do Fate Zero first. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I think that's the way a lot of people experienced it. Oh, because that first yeah, adaptation first. was not necessarily very good. Because they yeah, tried to do every storyline. I felt like it was trying to be everything all at once and yeah. not doing any of it particularly well. And I walked out, like, my feeling was like, eh, it's seven. It's not terrible. Yeah. But for people... I that watched are, it. Yeah. It was people, nice to see. Seven, I, I seven, mean, yeah, like it, that, but, you know. Fate is the first <clears throat> visual novel, Fate Stay Night specifically, is the first visual novel I went all the way through and did all the arcs for. Oh, okay. all this, uh, The routes for, rather. Um, I... Also Saya and Uta, but they don't have routes. I haven't done that. That's legendary. <laughs> I love that. that. I don't know if it was first, though. I think I think that came after. I think I did Fate Stay Night first. But so, uh, seeing Fate Zero come out after this, like, okay adaptation that tried to hit all the beats, mm. and then they were like, no, no, this franchise becoming huge. We're going to put real money into this. Let's do a killer prequel and not one that will piss people off. Like, let's develop what's happening here. Like, let's do some serious work on making sure this is good. Mm-hmm. Let's get somebody who's willing to do something that will really hurt people. Gen. Let's get Gen. <laughs> yeah. Like, they fucking put some real time and love into that. And it's like, it's no wonder that that one was so much more well-received than the first adaptation. I think it's a fair watch order to say... I don't know why we're talking about... Sorry, fate. I didn't Roger, get but this far off. I can't off, help yeah, it. Kind of, I can't help it. I love Fate. <laughs> I, I think a fair watch order to say for anybody is to just skip the original one and the original adaptation entirely and do Fate Zero mm. and then do Unlimited Blade Works because that seems to be like the... Uh, most digestible route adaptation they did. Yeah. And then if you're really loving it, still go on and do the movie adaptation they did for the last arc, Heaven's Field. Oh, I haven't and seen if, that yet, actually. I if you're fully hooked into everything, then you can go back and watch the original, original adaptation or explore other fate media that are out there and countless at this point or yeah. go back and play the original what, visual novel what, the original fate stay stay please don't go <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i mean it, it's not that it was that bad but you know it's it's like i want to introduce people to it but that was my hesitation mm-hmm. and maybe fate zero is what i'll say but uh it, but i will say just to uh push you towards the uh 
fate, and this is going to be a good sequence, so I'm going to take a moment here on camera to do this. Um, I need to see Heaven's Feel. I just lost track. Mm -hmm. You know, it's be like that. Saber Altar. This so, I'm going to pull this up Although here. Although I really like Saber as a character a lot. So this is, uh, basically, you can see my figures on the wall there. I'm not going to move this camera because I've got a oh, precarious setup right now. Cool. But so, I've got a Saber Altar figure. Uh, this oh, okay. one here. She has really? a removable mask there. But so it's like a... I mean, you've seen this kind of, like, goop in the background occasionally in right. some of the other shows. Yeah. So basically the vibe... Um, that goes on is, uh, and then let's do, uh, I think Sakura is her name, Sakura Yamato, uh, Heaven's Feel. They both have the same kind of, like, um, corruption power <laughs> going on. Okay. Um, obviously it's the same setup, so it's not like she summons Saber or anything like that. Mm -hmm. She still, uh... Well, no spoilers on anything, but she's still involved with who she's involved with. Okay. Uh, Saber is still our main boys. Character insert girl. You right. know, like, okay. it's all good. But, like, uh, it's... I watched it, obviously, having played the uh, game originally as my first exposure to Fate, which I think oh, is okay. very rare. I don't think many people start with the visual novel. Yeah, I, yeah, I only learned to. about it after I... I think I... <laughs> I don't know, I'd already seen the promos at least for the Fate Anime before I knew mm -hmm. there was a visual novel. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I, did, I don't know what time I learned it. But definitely, I never played the game and I just totally saw the anime. I think so. the game was really well done. I think it mm -hmm. uh, shows why it got an adaptation to an anime. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I mean, okay, yes, it is a visual novel. The way they power their summons is sex. So, yes, I mean, there's that. But if you get beyond that, if you accept you're in a visual novel medium, <laughs> um, the writing was really well done. They cared about developing the characters very thoroughly and giving you a lot of exposure. Like, the routes... Um, like, there's, there's entire different kind of consequences to decisions that, like... It's not it's not super decision driven per se, but it feels like you're exploring a whole different decision set that the characters are going through. Okay. And the world is dramatically different. Like you're learning different things each time you go through. Mm. Fate Zero kind of has the knowledge of everything okay. as a backstory perspective. But like the first time you run through, I don't think the first arc has a name. The first arc you run through, you don't really know what's going on with the church. But when you run through Unlimited Blades work, you understand, like, hey, the priest was, like, in the last war that my guy died, my dad died in, and they weren't friends. Right. And, like, his summon is still around, being perpetuated through the, uh, like, uh, the um, power being drawn out of children to, like, keep him sustained throughout this period of time. Oof. So he can cheat and participate in this war, too, to <laughs> try to win again. Right. Like, there's a lot of shit that's revealed to you as you go through the arc another time. And then you look back on your interactions with them and you kind of, like, pause. And then when you go through the next arc, you're kind of wanting to be careful around that guy. Yeah, you would be, right? <laughs> so it's very good in that regard. It's uh, done really well. It's got its nice comic relief moments. Like, mm. the, um, I think she's only really in the first one so much, but there's, like, a school teacher that our main boy is very close with who's kind of, like almost taking on, like, a stepmom type of role. Um, oh, okay. Um, because his parents aren't there. So, like, there, there's uh, a lot of character uh, moments that are caught just in the original. Um, but I feel like it's going down the same kind of, like, oh, the manga was better kind of talk. Like, oh. you know, you can... Everything's standalone. It's not a required viewing. The adaptations mm -hmm. stand in their own right. It's just the first adaptation is not s done super well. Oh, and it is yeah. fine, it's yeah. okay, but I, I would probably go through the recommend going through the visual novel before I would go through the first one. But mm -hmm. you haven't gotten to Heaven's Field yet. I'm interested to see what you think of Heaven's Field because okay, yeah. it uh, knowing everything, I was kind of expecting certain things. Um, so I wasn't as blown away by the revelations, and I feel like it leans on like blowing you away with like what they're doing with the characters. So mm -hmm. since I'd already seen it, I didn't I didn't feel like it was as impactful so, for me. I don't remember how how many viewing hours is uh, Heaven's Feel. I, I, it's three movies. Three three whole movies. Yeah, okay. they did a like triple movie. If I'm remembering oh. right. 
Let's see here. It's been a minute since it's come I, out. I, I weren't, weren't you in Japan when they were promoting it? I think I might have been. Yeah. I think I was. I definitely, they had a lot of the Fate stuff up from like, you know, like Ray and other character banners and Akihabara. So 120 for the first movie, 117 for the next movie, and 122 for the last movie. Okay. So probably about 320 minutes of actual content That's overall. a project, but my but no one's going to want to see it. Full season, thing. roughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's totally. Broke into movie segments instead. Okay. Interesting way to do it, too. I, I like that they're exploring doing it in a different way that could maybe get them a better budget, too. So maybe I'll watch Arcane first, if sure. you want. I wouldn't mind going through this again. We could queue this up after, too. Yeah, I was going to say, well... No, I'm trying to have you choose some of the stuff we go through. I don't want to just pick stuff that I Oh, no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> at, at, at some point in time, I could try to pick something out. I didn't do enough research yet, you know what I mean? Mm. Like... Now, the stuff I've been seeing recently has been very family-friendly, so I'm interested in stuff that's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, at this point. I, I enjoyed Mob Psycho. We're almost done with it. You know? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad you liked that. it. Yeah. So, wait, you, you said you had watched the first season, right? Uh, and we were picking it up after that? Well, actually, we watched... I don't know when my daughter started watching it. Sometime, probably in the first season, not the beginning, mm. but she started watching. Yeah, that's actually a really good show mm. for her because it's showing her... A lot of the depth that anime has without mm -hmm. explicitly not being kid friendly. Yeah. Like it's right on the edge of like that vibe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I think she can have her maturity level right now, she can handle that. Nice. Okay. You know what I mean? No, I wouldn't want to go like graphically past that where right. it's like horrible death scenes or sexuality, but they don't. Yeah. You know, so uh, we're, I think we're episode nine or ten in season three. Nice. And she's asked about it, like, hey, are we going to watch? You know, like, so she's into it, you know. Nice. <laughs> so I'll make a point of it tomorrow night. We'll maybe might even finish it up tomorrow night. Well, I think there's like a few more left for the season three, I think. I forget. Yeah, I don't remember how many there were. We'll, we'll probably finish it pretty soon. After that, then, you know, there'll be something else family friendly, which is, <laughs> that's not bad. I really enjoyed Spy Family a lot. Yes. Um, is, Are you and every other fucking person right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we could do a great analysis video about why you should watch Spy Family, except yeah. everyone will have already seen it by then. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> so, so this is a great deviation for that for me. You know, so I get to jump. I'm I'm happy to do Arcane or the or the Heaven's Feel. Eventually, I'll I'll come up with some of my recommendations, but I should probably sure. do some research beforehand. Um, I I want to kind of pour through some of the old classics and ask if you've seen them because there's some mm, really legendary yes. things and some of them have a darker edge to them. Yeah. I don't I don't want to go too long because you know some stuff is like, hey, you want to watch 752 shows? You know, one thing I tried to start. Uh, I was doing the thing where I tried to go through every Gundam in oh, chronological wow, okay. order. That's and a I, lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, oh yeah. I mean, I'd seen a lot of Gundam, and I'm a big mech fan overall. Yeah. But there's a lot of Gundam. <laughs> so I made it through, I wonder where, where the list is. Uh, I think I made it into, I, I definitely, I don't think these are everything. They are not breaking it down fully. There's another page where they break it down fully. I think I made it uh, in chronological order up to uh, where Wing was. And then I was like, okay, phew, I, I can watch Wing again and just enjoy Wing. And then I think I stopped from there. Yeah, so I've seen stuff there's... after Wing, but um, it's only the ones that have been like really stand out and that uh, people in the community talk about like turn a double zero stuff mm. like this and i was gonna say if i pick something that's huge like this i'll pick a story arc yes. you know so that we're not you know <laughs> in in again in that point so after i i did that i took a break from gundam but i was still kind of vibing on mech so oh, okay. i tried to watch legend of the Gal galactic heroes oh i've heard about that which is i i made it so many episodes in and the war was just starting. And it was like, dude. <laughs> and there's like intrigue. And like, people are like trying to assassinate people. It's so much more into like a real world grainy kind of like machinations of people's individual motivations. And how specific events play out. And yeah. less about the grand. I never realized how much Gundam <clears throat> could like gloss over some of these details. Because Gundam feels so detailed. But when you're, uh, when you're talking about whether or not this person's at this, like, gala 
and leaves early because they got upset and then isn't there to be assassinated at this right time. Like, I mean, it's uh, so (laughs) detail-oriented. It makes me think of the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, and I'm not an expert on this, but, you know, it was supposed to be the sparking event for World War I. But the people that were trying to do it screwed up time and again, and they eventually (laughs) just stumbled on him after he got lost in the car. <laughs> you know, like his driver got lost, and they, they the happenstance there had a chance. Is. Yeah, <laughs> and then they shot him up, and you know, and, and they got their assassination in. But it was just, yeah, it was it was like a comedy of errors that eventually finally landed. Although who knows? Everything was such a powder cake at that point in time. With all these crazy alliances that maybe yeah. something else would have tipped. You know, it's kind of. Good thing we never have an entangling alliance nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we could anyway. get, get wrapped up into grand wars over smaller ones now. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. So, uh, far be it us from ever to learn from history. Um, so, but, uh, it, Arcane, uh, though. About yeah, Arcane. Yeah, okay. Spe- yeah. Speaking of factional wars between different regions, Arcane. Cool. Um, so... Obviously, uh, again, I don't want to fuck with the camera, so I'll just... <laughs> pretty... Uh, this is actually very old school, so... Um, League is a game that I've talked to you about yeah, before. You, I'm sure you are, most people uh, you will... You are quite good at. Um, oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> hmm. um, they uh, go back... Uh, quite a bit before uh, doing any sort of animations. Here we go. Um, this is a poster I have behind me. It's, I don't think it's ever been fully in shot, but just so people know oh, what I'm talking about. Gotcha. This is from uh, not long after Jinx was released as a character, mm-hmm. and they always had this kind of putting these two in conflict with each other vibe going on. And it was never fully explained. It was mostly kind of like fan theories about what was happening and like character lines if you were in the uh, game and there were the two characters and they happened to be in the same place nearby and you did a certain emote function which most people don't do they would say different lines like there are interesting little clues here and there placed about Um, but arcane is the first time we've had um well any really animated sequence explaining the lore they've released Mm -hmm. lots of uh like almost digital comic books Okay. And uh, just like almost um, just text stories, uh, developing the world, exploring different characters' backstories Mm -hmm. beyond just the character description, which is how most of the stories are told. Um, But this is the first time uh, we've had that, and then we've had animated like cinematics, usually like an annual cinematic to get people excited for the year Mm -hmm. as the year's rank season is starting. Mm -hmm. And then like the world's playoffs they do a grand animation about that a lot of those will um either introduce a new character or uh, show off a bunch of uh, interactions with characters in the world either on the rift or like in their worlds related to their lores and how they became these legends that then were playable characters yeah and i was actually thinking so is the arcane the first of its kind then, like, there's other, there's other brief shorts you're talking about, right? Yes, it is the first full-length, like, either series or movie or anything. They haven't mm-hmm. done anything like that. It's the first okay. time they've okay. done something like that. Cool. Um, they released it in uh, three-episode chunks on Netflix. They mm-hmm. did the first three episodes, the next three episodes, and the final three episodes. Okay. Um, each of them is about an hour long. Oh, okay. So uh, we can do uh, either, like we did um, with this, break it up. I think it actually kind of, funnily enough, follows the same path. Uh, minor spoiler for Arcane, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. <laughs> but uh, not enough of a spoiler to where I'm not willing to tell it to you, just okay. you guys have seen it. Yeah. Um, between episode three and four, there's a bit of a time skip. Okay. So um, it's only a spoiler once you finish season three, or episode three, because you'll be kind of wondering what's going to happen next. So a little bit of a spoiler. Okay. Um, but that's why I feel like it's kind of broken apart one to three, and then four to nine. Oh, as kind okay, of groups. okay. So yeah, we, we could kind of do it that way if you want to. Sure. Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts just uh, halfway through. If you want to do it that way. Yeah, that seems good. Because that's, you know, that, I, I like the idea of that just because uh, I have a crazy schedule. Mm-hmm. And that allows me to fit it in and just combine when it works out for you, you know. Like, you have, your schedule seems more like the normal-ish. Kind of. You know, kind <laughs> yeah. of, right? Mine is Closer. just. Mine it's is not just, nights and, yeah. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> rotating. Like, I work next. I have to be at that 
you know, control, play. I gotta be at my work uh, at Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> it is what I check Starting in. the week off, it's yeah. Sunday night. Yeah, yeah pretty much, right. you know, and it's all over the place like that, so. Um, cool. No, I can I can manage that. I will say, uh, I don't, I don't know how ambitious I want to be about trying to put it on here while I'm streaming. So, I think I've seen somebody, like, play, uh, like the trailers for anime seasonal anime that's coming out mm -hmm. on stream and then edit it out for YouTube. Okay. I don't know how picky they are about that stuff. Cause I want to show. I'll, here's what I'll do. I will pull up what I want to show you and I am gonna show you off stream. So anybody who's watching and wants to follow along for the same experience, um, can do so. Uh, let's just do, um, Jinx music video. So, okay. when they release characters, they usually make a theme song for them. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit before Jinx came out, but right around her time was when they first started doing full-length animated little videos and making music videos to accompany them. Oh, okay. And they are released as a playable <clears throat> character for the first time. So I want to show you get Jinx, um, and I also just want to play you, uh, uh, Vi's theme, which came out back before they did that, but, um... Just a really good song. Oh, okay. part. I just want to share. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, so we'll do that. We'll wrap this stream up here. Any uh, bringing us back to what we're actually <laughs> here for, Magia Record. <laughs> Any final thoughts on Magia Record, the series as a whole? Um, chat's been quiet today, which is good. No spammers coming in trying to sell us <laughs> something or getting me to click a link. <laughs> Honest, anyone who is... The, anyone who had a good experience with Monaco Magica should check this out. That's yes. what I would say. Like, mm -hmm. if you like the first one, like if you're interested in this series, I would not say... Not even Rebellion, just the yeah, original series. Just the original series, I would say check this out. I would also say that like if you're interested in this, the best place to start is probably still Monaco Magica, the original series. Yes. But this is an excellent addendum to that. You yes. Know, like you can add this in later and, you know, uh, also just I would recommend it to anybody who wants kind of a more sophisticated storyline where, you know, like not everything ends well. Yeah. You know what I mean? It keeps things suspenseful. I think. Um, a lot of the characters you care about may meet bad ends. Yeah. You know, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, but the story is generally very good. The character development is excellent for the most part. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of, you know, not only a great, but, you know, for the most part, most yeah. of the girls, it's, it's, it's very good character development. And um, I can honestly say there wasn't really any time during my time of watching this where I felt it was slow or, yeah. you know, off point or anything like that. It just pretty much was good the whole way. Yeah. Um, I agree. I would say it's a, a master class in execution. Yeah. Aside from those like two nitpicks I had. Excellent pacing. Killer. Yeah. Uh, just as far as production and development and writing goes, yeah. very well done. Um, like you said, uh, it could be watched uh, after just the mainline series before Rebellion or after. I don't yeah. think Rebellion necessarily adds anything to it, um, since it. Uh, doesn't necessarily add to the experience of Rebellion. Um, because I think Mommy goes even harder once she's half Uwasa. Yeah, I would no recommend kidding, right? watching Rebellion first, <clears throat> just so you oh, can fully yeah. appreciate the fight between her and Homura. <laughs> like, like the escalation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's like, yes, Mommy can go hard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was great. I think... Uh, it does, it's a, it clearly was done to promote the game that it was associated with, <clears throat> and by how it never pierced into the general co uh, community to reach me mm -hmm. until I started doing my first video about Rebellion, um, I hadn't even heard of it. So it must have been in a very targeted, marketed way as like supplemental promotional material to keep people invested in the game is mm -hmm. the vibe I'm getting. Right. Which I think is a shame. And I really hope that uh, when well, Perks Not Rising comes out, people stumble across this. I would hope so too. That's one of the things I've noticed, and I can't know how this played out, but, but something that does play out with a lot of different franchises is 
you'll have stuff that gets released and is really for a Japanese audience. Mm. And look, I am one of the people saying, don't compromise. Make what you want to make for the Japanese audience, but please keep in mind, we might want to see it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the world outside of Japan, some <laughs> of this stuff is the bomb, and we, you, you have potentially millions of us that would love to tune in. Yeah, you know, definitely. And, and buy your figures and watch your shows and, you know... Yeah, we're, we're, there is, I, I would say it maybe, I don't know, it could have worked out like that where they were really focused on Japan with the game, you know, and then, oh, I guess we'll put it in, you know, wherever else. Right. We'll, we'll localize it somewhere, I guess, whatever, you know, yeah. kind of, that sometimes happens, and mm -hmm. then, you know, but hey, it, it's good enough to stand on its own. Yeah. You know, so. You, you don't need to play the game. Yeah. We haven't, I know very uh, little about the game, Eric knows nothing. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we got the full experience of the story there's yeah. not anything that was really lacking that I needed prior knowledge to, and it doesn't... Again, my the best thing I can say about this as a spinoff in a world where we've had so many shit adaptations of even the main line, like the recent Cowboy Bebop live-action one, very disappointing. Like, yes, <laughs> There were moments that I was able to enjoy it, but there were definitely moments where I did not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I mean, we come from a history of things like the Death Note adaptation. I was just going to say, the Death like, Note, the, eh. the, 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 the Western show adaptation, yeah. made me want to hurt myself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to, just to reduce one type of pain by distracting myself with another. You know, like, start the burning. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And I'm used to, again, historically, like, spinoff shows, like, sometimes will be animated in full chibi or something, and it's, like, cheaper to do so because it's easier to freehand, oh, okay, it's quicker, yeah. like, less intensive. Man, like, the they went full bore on this. This is, like, as good as I'm expecting. Like, if While well, Perk's Not Rising was done with as much attention to detail in the animation and writing as this was, I think it will have lived up to the name. Oh, hell yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. if you like the show of Monica in general, watch this one. It's yeah, good. Absolutely. It's Go for it. sure worth yeah. watching. It should be on your next watch and list after that. Not only that, but I think it'll be almost immediately obvious. Like, you wouldn't have mm -hmm. to be like, oh, well, I guess I'll stay out for a few more shows, see if it gets good. No, it gets good from the start, and as, it stays good. As we said know? in the first, watch th uh, first season review... <clears throat> The f entire first season is to make sure you feel confident that you're going to like this show. Yeah. <laughs> they really true. want you and, to. And they really <laughs> do set up that they're uh, honoring the nature of the world that's been built. Yeah. You know, and they are. And Yeah, I think it was done in yeah. a good way. It didn't yeah. drag during those episodes or anything. Like, they developed, like, what the USA were very thoroughly by yeah. doing that. And it's like, great. Like, and, they and, just, they achieved every goal. <laughs> and the storylines go, they give you new information enough to really feed you stuff to make you interested in, mm. but they also leave you a lot of questions mm. and that will eventually get answered most of them at least mm. you know so it's kind of it's good pacing it's good to keep you hooked in gradually learning more learning more answer one question I have two more you know and eventually yeah. it goes through that way and so well laid out mm. yeah all right well, with that being said, thank you all for watching. I'm sorry you missed our <laughs> intro. <laughs> I'll remember, remember to hit record next time I start recording a video. Uh, that would probably helpful. So distracted by my technical difficulties trying to get this to 4K. It should be 4K next time and not 1080 as we're in now, but still better lighting and better than last time. Sorry about last time. Yeah. Iterations. Uh, we all get better iterations. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so that'll wrap it up, and I'm going to start telling uh, Eric a little bit about Piltover and stuff.